All right, welcome to today's episode of the Australian Lawn and Garden Podcast. Uh, I've been looking forward to this one, Gary, because I am really interested in the Greenworks lineup and uh, interested in what you guys do. It's a brand new lineup. You said it came out in about June or something like that. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, June 1st, we launched it. Yeah. So it's very new, lots of interesting stuff. We're going to talk about the brand new stuff that you, you talk about at Equip and all that sort of stuff. And uh, all your, your 500,000 million products that you've got. Um, so neither of us get in the bed anytime soon. But and firstly, thank you for coming on the podcast, making time for it. Nah, thanks for having me on, mate. I've been looking forward to getting on here and having a chat and um, yeah, uh, telling everything that Greenworks has in the country. Fantastic. And uh, I want to just say for those people who are brand new to this series, uh, we're doing this series where essentially uh, I was inspired by a, a show called Equip Expo and and the lovely Americans over there who get the fantastic stuff that goes on. I thought, why don't we do something similar over here? I can't organize an Equip Expo, but I can organize a podcast series. And so what this is, we're just inviting brands to come on and talk about their strengths, talk about what they're doing that's unique. It's exactly the type of experience you would have. If you were at the Equip Expo, you'd go to each booth and talk to them and they would tell you all the things that's fantastic about them. And we just want to give everyone an opportunity for that. And I'm curious and I want to learn. Uh, I'm not a gear head, but I love you know, I love it, but I don't love it so deeply that I already know everything. So I'm just learning. And, um, you know, who better to do this than, than you, Gary? Tell me about your – what's your role at Greenworks before we get into anything else? Like, what do you actually do there? Uh, so my role is key accounts manager, um, but I mainly, uh, with the help of our team and uh, our other key accounts manager, look after our commercial division. That's been the focus for uh, – the last little while, um, but also the whole Greenworks uh, operation in Australia uh, in general. Um, but yeah, as I mentioned, the key focus in the last 12 months has been uh, the commercial line that we launched. So, And you were telling me off air that your your history in the industry is, is 20-something years. You know, yeah. So yeah. What, what, what were you doing before? Because Greenworks is new to Australia. They've been around in America for... A lot, a lot longer. But what were you doing before all this? Uh, pre Greenworks, um, and we're distributed by Jack Max in Australia. Um, I actually worked in a in a mower dealership, so my family owned a dealership in southeast Queensland. Um, so worked there on school holidays when I was at school, and when I was studying after school, uh, still worked there part time, and then sort of took a break and started full time there. Did a mechanic apprenticeship. Um, and worked in all facets of the business, um, assembling, working the counter, washing mowers, uh, and then end up running it and being a part of all that. So be about 18 months ago, decided I'd sort of, I was probably a bit longer than that. Um, had a bit of enough of, uh, yeah, uh, th- that side of it. And, um, yeah, got an opportunity with, uh, Jack Max and Greenworks and, uh, thought, well, I need to do something and I knew, know a thing or two about mowers in the industry. So might as well continue on there. Here's a really interesting question. We didn't, I didn't think I'd go down this path, but I'm interested to hear what you think because one of the things I've, you know, technology comes in and changes stuff and it disrupts industries. And one of the things that I've thought in the back of my head about it disrupting is the local lawnmower shop mm-hmm. because so much of that work that they do is repairing petrol engines, okay. combustion That's engines. Cool. And one of the benefits of battery gear um, is that it's incredibly low maintenance and it's kind of, you know, depending on the on the different brand, but you kind of got one moving part essentially uh, or depending on the um, product you're, you're talking about. But the, the motor itself or the, you know, the engine, whatever you call it, no, it's a battery motor, the, petrol engine. Yeah. But it's simple and it doesn't require as much stuff. So how do you feel? Do you feel like it's a little bit of you is sentimental towards – the mower shops that eventually if battery does progress like everybody predicts will you know slow down and, and kind of lose business i definitely do um most uh mower shop staff or dealers will definitely know that the industry and us as a whole and the whole industry know where the industry is headed and where it's changing um i think as a shop or, or an owner uh, you have to change with the industry and where where it is heading um, 
like you mentioned, there is um, one of the key benefits of battery, um, and I'm sure we'll delve into this with our range as well later, is that there is a lot less maintenance and a lot less moving parts in the units, but um, there is still repairs and servicing to be done. Um, I know with uh, some of our bigger products, obviously, we still need a service department to be able to look after that. So um, there is a bit of a sentimental thing that eventually um, I can't see Australia, but I I could be wrong here, um, going down the California path of no petrol eventually. But I could be proved wrong. I do believe there is probably one or two states that will possibly go down that path eventually. But we do follow the US trends in our industry and country essentially. But I think uh, for a a workshop or a service department side, the... um, the guys in there need to just keep um, upskilling and keeping on top of the the technological advances. Um, and some of it's moving at a pretty rapid rate too, which can be a bit scary yeah. for some some people that have been in the in the game a long time. So, yeah, yeah, I feel like with you know when I first like, this is like with robot mowers, right? Um, when I first started hearing about robot mowers, which was you know, eight nine years ago or something like that the um, local dealership near me was stocking some when they first were coming to Australia. I remember feeling this fear, you know, like, oh, no, like, you know, this is my job and, and these robot mowers, you know, whilst right, right now they, they can't do what I do, but what if they do one day? And I was, I, I, my, my opinion has changed because since growing a business and trying to find employees, it is so hard to find good gardening employees. It but is. what I find in the small mechanic industry i haven't met a business owner in that neck of the woods who's like oh yeah yeah we're fully staffed like i don't even like i i can't remember a time where it's not just that it's hard to find employees in that neck of the woods like nobody is fully staffed or if they are fully staffed they kind of you know like yeah, I want to be respectful, but maybe they're not yeah. entirely happy with everybody on their team. You know what I oh, mean? Like, it's, I do. Um, yeah, and you tell it, me about your experiences. Ah, oh, definitely. One of the number one um, problems in the uh, for a mower a mower dealership is finding uh, good staff that have knowledge of the industry because your counter guy is a person that's not just at the front of mum and dad, but um, or your commercial operators. So they're the face of everything. So if you don't have a skilled staff person out there, uh, then you're um, fighting an uphill battle uh, with uh, industry people coming in and wanting to have information given to them straight away. Uh, yeah. But then in the back of the shop, uh, small engine mechanics are as rare as hen's teeth. Um, there's oh plenty goodness, of the guys yeah. that... Yeah, there are plenty of guys that say they can... Or people think, oh, it's just changing the oil or this or that. But to yeah. actually um it, diagnose a two-stroke engine which is probably the more harder than a, than a four-stroke in my humble opinion um well, you would correctly know. and yeah um and fix it um it takes a lot of uh, years and a lot of um knowledge to do that and also um it's not like if you're working say if you're a mechanic at a still shop you're going to do predominantly a lot of still product or husky yep. or or shindo or any of that yeah. um but you're still going to get a mixture of most other stuff. If you're a mechanic at Toyota and you just do Toyota, that's all you're ever doing. So yes, a small yeah. engine mechanic has to ha- their scope has to be quite varied. Um, I really think a problem in that industry, and I saw it um, was when I was doing my trade. I was 22. I start I started because I was mature. Um, just a lot of the young blokes when the money wasn't there. Like no, I think yeah, my first exactly. my first week, like every apprentice, but I think I was on 140 bucks a week, and that was in 2004. So, um, a lot of friends of mine that I met through TAFE when I started, they got to their third year and went and did jet skis or went and did heavy diesel because you're getting even when you finish, you're getting double the money. money. Yeah, um, I had a shop owner tell me that um, he had a guy. There was a guy who was offered. Because there's so much mining here in WA, right? Yeah. And, you know, about a year ago, I had a conversation with a client who was a manager at Rio Tinto who said they had 1,600 job vacancies at Rio Tinto alone in the state, right? Yeah. And um, anyway, so around the same time, this guy said that one of his best guys got offered. Luckily, he didn't take it uh, for family reasons because of FIFO, but he got offered more money than the shop owner was making himself. 
and the shop owner was like, I may as well just go shut the shop and go on. And go do it himself. Yeah, you exactly. can't compete. You can't compete. And then obviously the last couple of years with um, uh, I hate the COVID, <laughs> um, but yep. also what happened to the industry was that um, we were probably one of the luckier ones in that um, most of Australia had very good uh, conditions and everyone was at home. So the industry expanded quite rapidly, um, but that yeah. dried up a lot of the talent pool as well. So. Um, and yep. I think shops are still trying to recover from that amongst everything else. 100%. Look, let's get into it then. Well, we'll wrap up this part of the conversation where we're basically saying, look, you've got, I actually think, and I think you agree having been in that history, that the battery stuff, because you will still have regular maintenance of, of you know, you know, on hedge, hedge trimmer gearboxes and, and sharpening and, yeah. and backlapping cylinder mowers if, you've, if you're doing that over in here in WA or or, you know, still replacement parts and things break. And, and I actually think it'll be great because the, it'll be the hardest person to find will not be as relied upon. And, yeah. you know, those petrol engines that still are needed and fit a certain type of application, probably going to get serviced a little bit quicker, you know. so That's right. Well, let's get into your actual range and yep. uh, let's get into it. You know, a couple of episodes ago, I asked if people would be interested in purchasing a lawn care package that I designed. I'd had a couple of messages from people asking for that. I didn't think there'd be too much interest. There was quite a bit of interest. So I've made a package, but it's not just a spreadsheet version that I talked about in that other podcast. It's actually a spreadsheet uh, and a one hour plus video explanation going through every single little detail of the the package or the program and we go into exactly what fertilizers i use exactly how much i apply why i I do that how i think you know how you would compensate for weather what sort of wedding agents kelp products all that kind of stuff when we mow when we groom when we aerate uh different herbicides we use Everything is covered in that. If you're the sort of person who's interested in that, it's seventy three dollars and fifty cents. Uh, you can blame the US exchange rate for that random number, but it's seventy three dollars and fifty cents. Uh, on the Patreon, there's a link in the video description or the podcast description. And if you're the sort of person who loves this kind of podcast, uh, you know that this whole series we're doing for Makers Month. It's the best way to, to support this is to jump on the Patreon and become a monthly member. There's a lot of work uh, involved with these kinds of podcasts. I can't do it on my own, so I'm now getting people to help me with editing and things like that, and that comes straight from the Patreon. So if you're a Patreon, genuinely speaking, this podcast series is brought to you by you. I could not do this much work on my own. So thank you so much. Let's get back into the podcast. All right, so we got the stuff on the website here. The first thing to get straight off the bat is your range is really, really broad. There's a lot of things. Not everything in this photo is in the Australian market yet. We don't really need snow blowers or snow sweepers, whatever no. you call them, for example. But the we have been asked, <laughs> really, Threadbow and <laughs> we have, yeah, Threadbow and around there, yeah, and a couple of places in Tassie have said he's going to bring these in, but um. Yeah, not at the moment. No, I mean for the, for the six you sell a year, it might not be. You know, yeah. you might not cover no, the shipping. Probably not worth. No. Yeah. Uh, I just remember. I just saw a meme in my head of uh, one of the Australian <laughs> ski sites in the middle of winter <laughs> last winter, and it had about yeah, I don't know four centimeters of snow in it. Poor, poor ski lovers. Yeah. But uh, no, your 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 breadth of of products is huge, and even um, what's we're, we're looking only here. If you're on YouTube, you can see this photo here. I'm on the Greenworks website, but you've got just a huge number of products, and this is just the 82 volt. If I go down to you've got 24, 40, 60, 82, and 240 watt pressure washers. And uh, yeah, let's just have some fun and click the lifestyle stuff before we let's get into it. Lifestyle's my, it's uh, the favorite one at the moment. <laughs> no. um, these are very exciting. <laughs> uh, it's got no relevance to anything at all, but we're going to have fun. Stop judging us, people. The, <laughs> you've got little motorbikes. Now, they're not like... We do. A motorbike might be too generous of a, what do you call it? A mini bike. There you go. It's a mini bike. 60 yeah. volt mini bike. That's, that's good fun. If you're a 13 year old boy, there is nothing else you want in life. Other than something like that, you know. 
you can you can drive around the um the paddock um it's got a uh, bluetooth speakers so put on your favorite tunes and uh cruise around and do some jumps so <laughs> Um, and then pull the battery out and go put it in your Greenwork 60 volt uh, trimmer or push mower and go do the lawn for mum and dad. Yeah. Do you know what? That's like a, yeah, that would actually work. It would be like, mum, mum will buy you a, a Greenworks little mini bike, but you know, you have to mow the lawn as part of it. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's part of what you've got to do to pay it back to mum. You've, so, you've got to mow the lawn um, and charge the battery and we've only, you've got to share the battery between the two, right? So... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, nah, they're launching. Um, we should have these here on market in a, about another four, three or four weeks. They should be due. So um, currently just the go-kart and the mini bike. But as you can see, we should have some e-bikes running off the 60-volt battery platform next year too. We're just nice. working at a couple of regulations in the back end for our market. Oh, yeah. Good old regulations. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> how fast do these things go? I mean, that's the question everyone's going to ask, isn't it? Um, yeah, the, how fast? So the mini bike and the go-kart will have a top speed of 40 k's an hour on sports mode and eco mode is 23 kilometers an hour. And then you have a range of 32 k's. So Gee, that's pretty um, good. yeah, yeah. And I mean, you know, um, it is mole marketed at the teenagers, but the mini bike and adults can ride it. Um, I've ridden it quite a lot. <laughs> Um, of course, quite a bit of fun. That's, that's how <laughs> you get from the from the office to the to the kitchen at the you know from your room in yeah. the office to the kitchen. <laughs> the whole yeah, seven I mean, meters is <laughs> yeah yeah. Um, but yeah, no, so a bit a bit of fun stuff there. But we're gaining quite a lot of interest in those products as well. So I know, it's good. Yeah, it's just good fun. And look, let's get into the the eighty two volt range now. The eighty two volt vat batteries yep. won't work on the sixty volt stuff, will it? No, so we do a multi-platform uh, range of products. So we obviously do 24, 40, 60, and 82. So each uh, platform, the battery fits within that range like most other brands, but we just offer a variety of voltages, which we can probably touch on why the Greenworks do it that way and um, the sort of market channels that they're targeted at. But yeah, 82 volt is primarily at our um, heavy user or con contractor or commercial market, yeah. So for the listener, here's how this podcast is going to go. We've got, um, we're going to talk through the 82 volt range that's targeted to commercial operators, uh, go through the majority of the products that are in there, talk about some stats, compare some stuff, all that sort of stuff, all the good things that you, you love to hear. Uh, depending on how we go for time, we'll touch on some of the 60 volt stuff. And there's even one or two 40 volt things that I think could be used in certain circumstances for some of you, or uh, well, definitely for the hobbyists out there. But even some commercial stuff uh, that might be of use if you know, certain conditions might um, you know, be favorable. But what we've got here, let's just get into this 82 volt range. You've got, I'm going to describe what I'm seeing for those listening. There is what I've known as a gator, even that's the John Deere terminology for it, but like a, a four wheel drive, mini ute, mini sort of golf cart kind of looking thing. Yeah. People U UTV side by side. Yep. Right. Okay. So that's what people use for like maintaining large properties, right? Lots of, um, you know, uses for that. If you're doing commercial stuff or you've got an acreage property, You've got Anchorage, yeah. yeah three sit down uh, classic Z, uh, like zero turn mowers, four stand on mowers here, a whole range of like an a, you know whipper snippers, chainsaws, hedge trimmers, three different eighty two volt mowers at different sizes, battery charging packs, you know pressure cleaners, rotary hose, all kind of stuff, augers, huge range. I don't see there's much here that somebody couldn't or, or would need that isn't being supplied i'm guessing that's kind of what you were trying to achieve like a full platform commercial operator can get everything in one space 100 percent, yeah um i might be a bit biased but i think we have probably the broadest range of battery commercial uh product on the market uh currently um and if someone wants to move their whole fleet from uh, our traditional uh, petrol to full battery, then we definitely provide the solution, like you said, from a, a trimmer, a blower, a chainsaw, push mower, um, stand-on mower, ZTR, 
if you've got a side by side or a, a gator work you in your in your in your um fleet then yeah we we offer the full range um in battery is there anything that you now that you might i don't want to upset you with your bosses over in america but is there anything that is like because the americans are getting because we talk about the snowblower right but whether in any range yep. in any range 24 volt up to the 82 is there anything that you really wish was over in australia that you're kind of pushing to get over here um there's a few things uh the big trailer on the background of that image is something that we're um just trying to get to is that, that's actually what we call our is that something you sell uh, yeah in america yeah they, it's called a mobile charging uh or mobile power station so ah. uh if you see the image on that it's a rendered image in that but you can fit your two standards or a ZTR and all your handheld and the bench at the front there has two six port uh, dual uh, charges yeah. plus solar plus uh, charging. Yeah, they, right. they're your wall charges for your bigger unit. So um, we definitely uh, will have that yeah, that's pretty at some cool. stage. That's only going to be for the select uh, customers, but... Um, that'll cost like oh, there's, there's three or four Zinger boxes, wouldn't it? Well, maybe, <laughs> yeah. maybe five be a couple yeah there'd be a couple but um one of the big things which uh, we all know is people um operators want wanting oh how many batteries do i need to get through a day or yeah. how am i going to charge it well that's um you know i can go to the servo well that's pretty well your power station on wheels and then at the end of the day you just plug it and it t- plug it plug it in and it tops itself back up so yeah um that's that's a big thing for us to try and get here eventually one of the things that I, uh, I sort of realized, I mean, interesting, because um, battery is essentially you're getting a down payment for, uh, you know, a long run time because you don't have to keep filling up on fuel. So the cost of the electricity, and this is across all brands, obviously, the cost of the electricity is much cheaper than the cost of the petrol. And so, you know, over... It's different brands, it's different, right? But it might be, you know, obviously it depends how much you use it as well, but a year or a year and a half, two years, three years. Is that kind of what you get for a payoff time with? Pretty much, yeah. So return on investment is a big, big question that we get asked regularly, pretty well on a daily basis, either through our dealer network or through Facebook or emails to our support office. Um, It probably comes more into play on some of those bigger dollar items Mm -hmm. like the stand-on and the ZTR, and that's where it shows the the bigger uh, return as well. But it's not to be said that a return on investment on even your trimmer or your push mower that isn't 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 there as well. Um, I think a key thing for a lot of people to remember is with battery, you're buying your fuel upfront. Yes. So you're paying for that, that upfront cost, which is what you said. But also when you go to the servo, they don't give you a warranty on your fuel, but battery manufacturers do give you a warranty on that fuel load upfront. Um, everywhere in Australia is different. Uh, in terms of electricity costs, which is obviously is going up, but petrol's going through the roof as well. Yes. So just as an example on on, on that return, um, our Optimus 24 kilowatt 60-inch ZTR retails for 49999 which is that one right there. Mm-hmm. Um, that's comparable to a 38 horsepower 1,000cc petrol engine 60-inch ZTR, which is around about $30,000. Mm-hmm. So over three years you're going to be looking at now i probably should have sent you this image as well but um you're going to be looking at about i think from the top of my head it's about thirty five thousand dollars in fuel costs so that's working that, on six hours yeah run okay. time six hour run time five days a week for, for petrol if, yeah five days a week yeah six hours yeah. work time five days a week for, for 40, 45 weeks of the year yep um whereas your battery charging is about eight what's it Five or six thousand dollars, something like that, because it's thirty cents a kilowatt hour. It costs you roughly about three dollars a day to charge. Oh wow! One of our battery zero turns. Really? Um, I mean, I don't know what yeah, I would so expect it's, it's because I don't not, know this stuff yeah, off the top of my head. But that just sounds yeah, cheap. Yeah, it's it's yeah, it's three or f- it might be five dollars, give or take. It's th- thirty cents a kilowatt, so um, hour roughly is your charge costs and then that's and then you factor in your maintenance cost which is what we touched on before um obviously with any battery product but with a battery uh zero turn or 
whatnot. There's no belts or pulleys or engine or anything like that. So, so let, let's just say, so let me repeat this. You're saying there's about $35,000 in fuel costs over how many years? He's doing the math. Three. Three, three years. And that's five days a week. Yeah, I am. Sorry, I am doing the math. Sorry for those, that, yeah, for those yeah. listening, the, the pause was um, was that we are both male, and you know, answering a question and typing <laughs> in on a calculator is far beyond yeah. anyone's I have any got male's my capacity. Calculator working right now. <laughs> <laughs> so what um, I was what I was thinking as you're doing that uh, is uh, so thirty five over three. So you've got what? Here we go. I actually have my. I will. I will correct if I can. Five years over five years okay. is what I've done the calculations on on this. Yep. So your five year f- petrol costs with the same six hours a day, um, yep. five days a week, forty six weeks a year, forty seven thousand two hundred and fifty dollars, and that's working out about two dollars a liter for normal unleaded. Okay, and what your battery charging? Right. Okay. Yeah. You go. Sorry, cut you off. Yep, your battery your, ba- your battery ch- charging costs over that five year period is five thousand eight hundred dollars. So forty two thousand dollars, roughly difference. Yeah. Forty seven. So if you, yeah, over five years, you're looking at about thirty grand in front on the battery ZTR. So if we five years, and we've got a forty two thousand, so it's about what seven thousand, eight thousand dollars a year. Is that right? Roughly, you're going to be in front. Yeah. $8,000 a year. And I would say that most operators who are listening to this, right, because obviously there's a lot of people who full-time ride on mow. Most operators, I think, who are interested in ride on mowers are probably doing one to two days a week or wanting to do about that yeah. and they'll mix it with their walk behind mowing. So even if you were doing one day a week, you'd still be one-fifth of that instead of five days a week, which would be yep. what? Eight thousand dollars a head, you know, over a five year yeah. period of time. And the thing, yeah. so what I was trying to get at is, on these larger purchases, you don't actually pay up front because I would say ninety percent of these purchases are financed. So yeah. I mean, you would have to put in a little bit of extra for interest, but the reality is, is that the interest is is not going to be, you know, counting out all that. Uh, the interest for the battery part of it wouldn't. It wouldn't make eight thousand dollars worth of difference at minimum. Definitely not thirty or forty thousand dollars worth of difference. So, no, that's right. I wonder. Now I'm thinking out loud. I wonder if it would be a strategy. And of course, you would probably say yes. And all the finance brokers would definitely say yes. Uh, but I'm just thinking out loud as a strategy to uh, you could maybe buy everything you wanted in one hit under finance if you wanted to, and actually break the cost of your batteries down. Over the life of the warranty, how big is the warranty on the batteries? On the bigger units, so the zero turns, the stand-ons, and the side-by-side. Um, actually, I'll leave the side-by-side out because it's only on the battery on that. It's five years, 2,000 hours. Yeah. Well, my, my strategy has always yeah. been when I'm financing, if I'm getting equipment, like I'll just – the finance lo- uh, period is the is the warranty period. Warranty period, yeah. And so yeah. if anything goes wrong with it – whatever you know yeah it's it's fine and and you know i know i haven't gotten a loan since interest rates went really high i haven't needed to so i i don't know how that works out for most businesses but for for most of the last 10 years it's been a no brainer if you're if you're getting more efficiency or you're saving more money the interest really as long as the equipment's being used, what kills businesses when they finance a thirty thousand dollar lawn or and it sits around doing nothing for three years? It's around and it's not generating income. Yeah, but, but any product, whether that's Greenworks or petrol or whoever it is, it's it's a good, it's interesting strategy, and it might be, maybe it's one of the things stopping people is the is just the sheer upfront cost. And if you're going to get a couple of things, maybe that's an option. So yeah, definitely. You know, let's get into the battery side of this. We, we've I, I want to talk on the on the ride-ons a little bit more, but I'll click on this battery page, yep. and we'll just go through it because before we get into anything else, the the reality is is that with a battery powered product, a lot of it is really dictated by the battery. And I've said right. this in a different episode, but I think I want to repeat it for most of these is. I watched a video. Um, have you ever seen Project Farm on YouTube? Have you seen his stuff? No, I haven't. No. He's very, very popular. And what he does, he does side-by-side comparisons of just about everything. And he's really thorough. So he was, he was side-by-side comparis- 
repair, a lawnmower, an angle grinder, um, ratchet straps, knives, uh, knife sharpening. Yeah, so everything. Yeah. Yeah, okay. And he's incredibly thorough, very interesting. If you're nerdy, I highly recommend his channel. He's got a couple of million subscribers, I think. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to subscribe after this. Yeah. So <laughs> a video that you'll be fascinated by is he got a Milwaukee angle grinder. Being a competitor of yours, I hope you forgive me for bringing up a different brand. But um, no, that's okay. he got a Milwaukee angle grinder and he got three or four rip-off Milwaukee batteries and put them in the same angle grinder and ran them and compared what the, how the rip-off batteries performed to how the genuine batteries performed. I was shocked at how bad some of these rip-off – I thought it would be like a 10% or 20% difference. And some of the rip-off batteries did like made the – higher quality uh, angle grinder looked like an absolute piece of rubbish. And I didn't... Because they didn't... Yeah. yeah, because I don't know what it was, the technology in it or the battery cells or whatever they were doing. So what are you doing in your battery? Because the point I'm trying to get across is is you can have the same motor and like, like in this video and two different qualities of batteries uh, and different results. So what are you doing with your batteries that you're proud of, that's unique, that's that's worth bringing up and talking about? Yep. No. Um, so I think a key thing for us with Greenworks is that we manufacture 80% of our uh, product all in-house so we don't outsource anything and that includes our battery technology as well. So um, everyone, that's probably a big space where there is a lot of uh, progression, especially recent times with, with battery technology. Um, we've been doing batteries since 2004, so I'd like to think that Greenworks, we've definitely got our, um, our technology right. Uh, we do have some exciting stuff. We mentioned with Equip earlier, there is some exciting stuff from us coming in the short term, but currently while well, we're on 82 volt in this range, we do a, in Australia, we only bring in the four and the eight amp hour battery. So, yeah, yeah. um, over, over in the US, they do have a five amp hour and I think a two and a half, but we don't see the need to have a four or five and an eight in our market yeah um, and two, two and a half for a commercial operator is not i mean for for a hedge trimmer possibly yes, yeah. but that's about it well yeah and um, that's mainly due to weight yes and what is the weight of um you know okay look we talked about this before the reality is is that nobody knows what their weaver sip away is unless you are a psychopath right sorry people who actually know i'm not serious but you know like someone someone's going right now it's 5.7 kilos <laughs> yeah 5.72 <laughs> thank you very much no but like i know we it. don't weigh them but we feel them in our hand and there's a difference between let's say 5.7 where like 99 percent of the weight is on one side of the machine and 5. Eight, where it's perfectly balanced and all that kind of stuff. I found personally that um, I won't mention the brand, brand but I have a, a, a battery, a different brand battery uh, whippy, and I regret buying the biggest battery because it, whilst overall it's not too heavy, it doesn't feel as good as their the petrol, and it doesn't feel as good as other things that it's I've used. Balanced. And it's yep. I don't think it's the machine's fault; it was my purchasing fault. I think it would be a better machine with a smaller battery. But then the smaller battery wouldn't last all day, so I'd need last two. Time. But I think for commercial operators, they, you know, what what did you feel? So, so what kind of weight are you getting out of these when you've had them in your hand? The subjective feel you have is is a four amp hour um, kind of the go to, or the eight amp hours pretty light and it's actually a really versatile thing. Um. Oh, definitely for hand tools. I would definitely recommend to anyone the four amp hour. Right. Um, purely exactly what you're saying. Uh, weight, I think a big, um, not misconception, but with battery in general is it should always be lighter than a petrol unit. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest thing with batteries is runtime and the weight of the battery. And that's where a lot of technology is coming into um, our marketplace as well in terms of uh, instead of using cells, which is the traditional battery assembly method, we're seeing pouch lithium and uh, card, like a credit card type slot top style set up to save weight but have more power. So for us, um, all of our hand tools, we always would recommend using a 4 amp. You could definitely use an 8, but you know you've definitely got the 8 amp hour battery on board. You feel it. Uh, yeah. I think from the... Yeah, definitely. I think from the top of my head, the four amp hour is three point seven kilos. 
um, and the eight is four point three. I think it's nearly it's nearly another kilo heavier. So okay, right. Um, but obviously, you put an eight amp hour in, you're doubling your runtime on any tool. So that's pretty much um, um, it's a balance. If you if you're happy with the balance of the unit and the weight, then run the bigger one. That's been my theory with uh, my previous career selling battery products of another brand. Yeah. Um, but it, like you said, it comes down to personal preference. We've had some people that think the four is too light in in our trimmer and prefer the eight because they just feel that they like that bit of weight. Yeah, they got bigger biceps um, than you and me. Those people. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not pressing what they are. <laughs> I'm, I'm lacking um, my creatine in my diet. Uh, yeah. Do Do you guys uh, obviously at the shop you can put them in and try them right, so you could get a good feel. Yeah. But I'm more talking yeah, for so we, for the people who uh, they're going. A lot of people, you know, you know this. They they go online. And they're going to research and do their maths before they go and have a face to face conversation because that can be a little bit awkward if you don't really yeah. like the product. Um, so what kind of price are we looking at with the four amp hour and the eight amp hour? And, um, so the f- four amp hour, you're looking at a retail price of 439 mm-hmm. and then the eight amp hour, sorry, 449 and the eight amp hour is 739. So it's better value for money so, per amp hour, obviously to get the bigger one as well. Get the bigger one. Yeah. Um, the bigger one is obviously more suited to the push mowers. Yes. Um, yep. But if you do want that longer run time uh, in the hand tools, then you are better off value-wise going going the 8 amp hour. When you talked about the weight of them, they were actually quite similar in weight. And what that's telling me is that because you would obviously have doubled the cells for 8 amp hour. Double the cells, yeah. Which means there's a lot of yeah. weight in everything else in there. So is, there is, is that yeah. because there's – well, like, is it just super thick, you know, plastic walls and, and, you know, is it? It's a fairly thick wall. You have obviously with both batteries, you've got your BMS, so your, your chipboard essentially, yeah, uh, which all lithium batteries have. Um, and that's probably a touch on what with our batteries, everyone has their, has their features, but I think our um, temperature range and our temperature cutouts is definitely uh, up there in the in the industry, yep. um, which is a big thing in our country for battery. Yes. So explain um, that really briefly for those people who have no idea about the temperature stuff. So with lithium, uh, especially with handheld tools, so I'll touch on the ride-on because the technology, the battery, the lithium technology we use in the bigger stuff is different uh, type of lithium than what is used in the hand tools. But most uh, manufacturers all use the same lithium type composition Mm -hmm. uh and we have a safety built into every every battery so for a temperature range of i think it's ours is minus sorry mate it's been a long day um uh, i think it's around zero or minus two it won't operate you have to warm the battery up for it to work it it shuts itself down to protect the to protect the battery pack and to protect the cells yeah uh and then it's 50 degrees is its top where it will cut out. So you'll hear sometimes, oh, it cut out when it was hot. Um, and generally that's the batteries obviously probably being laying in the sun. Yeah. Um, and then when they get put into a tool, obviously they do generate a little bit of heat. Uh, as you can see on the picture there, we do have um, some cooling uh, cooling uh, vents in our battery system. So that's that assists us with... Um, yep cool it, trying to get some airflow when it's in the tool but also when we um when we charge as well our battery charges uh blow draw air in and blow air over the over the unit to assist in our fairly rapid charging oh i do want to have a uh, little shout out to uh <clears throat> friend of the channel uh catch pro and vanagies because uh i had this problem with some of my in perth we're talking about the heat in perth before we yep. talk about like some really hot days. We've had problems before with certain two strokes, but they just, they get too hot that they don't start. And we've actually, yep. <laughs> believe it or not, we run them underwater, like just run the tap on some of the plastic to cool, to them, cool down. them down so that we can start them. Once they start, they seem to be okay. And what we realized is that we kept, we used to have problems with everything, not starting. And then we only started having problems with our blowers. And what I realized is that we changed from having all of our gear on the back of the ute sitting on the aluminium tray to on a catch pro defender rack, which is a side ute yep. rack. And what I've realized is the blower still sits on the back of the tray. And when we drive between jobs, 
the wind is rushing straight past these engines and even if the ambient air temperature is 35 or something like that, just the breeze actually cool it actually them cools them down. I'm like, oh, man, it's a side benefit to these racking systems that I never saw before. I haven't had – and that's with two-stroke. And so my battery stuff, I'm really quite interested in in how that plays out. I have had um, once or twice the blower actually overheat from the different brand. Uh, which has its own yep. protection mechanisms. So I just thought uh, that's worth saying at least as well for those people who are out there who are considering getting this, that that's kind of – that might be a good option if they don't have one of those already to kind of keep things a little bit cooler. Yeah. Yeah, I actually – um, even though we don't really need it with the battery because uh, – but I have Defender racks on our trailers when we go around the countryside touring. So mm-hmm. um, thanks to Ben and Benny and Catch Pro. So, yeah, Benny Hoover. Yeah. Um, Benny Hoover. Um, I did make a mistake on the weight of those units. I was like, that didn't seem right. So while we'll talk and I quickly check. So the four amp hour battery is just over two kilos. Okay, right. And the eight and the eight amp hour is three point eight. So there's some people um, who not, and have who listen to the first bit and they cut off. You know, they yeah, they're like they, their kids distract heavy. them. They, they finish their drive <laughs> and they're gonna have the wrong information for the rest of your life. And <sighs> Sorry, guys. Exactly. <laughs> Send me an email. <laughs> <laughs> they won't even know. They won't know what they're wrong. Okay, I so know, that's, gone. that's a lot. That's a lot more different than. Uh, well, at least yeah, it's, it is. Yeah, it's somewhat different. It's a fair bit. So let's talk about the charging then, because I I like okay, dual port charger, smart move, right? Yep. Like, yep. no one in the commercial space is buying one battery. Resi stuff, yeah, you no. get a single charger, whatever, right? But. Like, I mean, yeah. I've got Ryobi drills and AEG drills and all sorts of DeWalt drills and stuff like that at my uh, warehouse, right? Just a bunch of stuff that I've got there. And I have every single charger plugged in all the time because you're yeah. using all these different tools and you don't want to, you know, you just want to plug them all in. And um, so a dual charger or a six-port charger, I love that you don't even have a single charger. You've just been like, nah, stuff it no we don't bother with that yeah. not for commercial not for anyway. commercial that's right so um six port charger it kind of looks like an esky with some wheels for yeah. those who listen. it doesn't yep. have a cooling function or is that just to make it look like you're cool like it, you're a cool it cat. just makes it look like you're cool you're turning up the amount of times i've been asked is where are the drinks <laughs> um every every demo i do actually is probably like is that the fridge i wish it was um but it does definitely have a cooling function for the batteries, but um, yeah. not a cooling function for to keep us hydrated, unfortunately. Mate, that's in the next that's next year's Equip Expo release. Yeah. <laughs> it's on the cards, so I it actually cool, sweet. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That, that, I'll put that on the back of my little BMX bike. Or not BMX bike, my little yeah. mini bike. <laughs> I've got my Esky and my mini yeah, bike. Yeah, you can tow your you tow your mini bike with your cold drinks. I tell you what, I I um, realize what you guys are trying to do. You're trying to tap into the you know, the the parents who have thirteen year old boys market. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying, whatever yeah. whatever has makes thirteen year old boys feel really cool and an esky on the back of a mini bike does. But talking about more serious things, six port charger, why would you go for a six port charger over three dual port chargers? And what's the price difference? Let's start with the price. What's the price difference between price them so two? your price difference your price for a dual port charger is two hundred and forty nine dollars. Mm-hmm. And your six port charger is nine hundred and ninety nine dollars. So it's more expensive so, per battery to go for the six port charger. Who did you is. have in mind when making that? Because obviously it's targeted at a certain type type of situation. Ah, uh, yeah. So mobility is probably the uh, the key with the six port charger. So um, obviously it's on wheels. It's got a pull out handle. So the idea with that would be at the end of the day. Um, the uh, contractor comes home if they've got a van or a ute the batteries are in it lift it off pull it into the shed or the garage plug it in yep. forget about it next morning pick it up with your with your actual esky um, and and chuck it in the car and away you go for the day and if you do have onboard charging it still runs a normal 10 amp plug um, and it can charge throughout the day whereas if you were to have three dual port chargers obviously that presents some problems initially to set up in 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 your onboard setup yeah, yeah which one's faster at charge them or are they about the same uh they're pretty close but the dual port does win the battle um you're looking at on a four amp hour if you have two four amp hours in the dual port charger you're looking at about 50 to 60 minutes mm-hmm. give or take 
Um, that's for the four amp. If you have, and it's variable. So if you have one to three four amp hours in the six port, it's about 40 minutes. But then if you have all six, you're looking at about 70 minutes. So, um, but they can be in various states of charge as well. It's all, it'll all shut off independently, which whenever every battery hits their yep. recharge point. So it sounds like um, it's interesting because some, some brands have a philosophy, like a battery philosophy and charger philosophy of like buy a few batteries and really fast charging charges so you can charge on the go. And other brands are not focusing on the charge times. Some of them very slow, you know, slower than, you know, an hour for that kind of stuff. Um, and their philosophy is is the battery should last you a day and you charge it overnight kind of thing, you know, and yep. you should have enough batteries for a day. And it's interesting because they kind of work out, if you do the maths, somewhere similar. Like, you know, the charges end up being so expensive that, you know, you kind of buy more batteries or the batteries end up being so, so expensive you can kind of just buy the fast charger. So that's just an interesting philosophy that's I've noticed. Yeah, I think um, there's definitely, like I said, there's definitely within the industry and brands, there's two schools of thought. Um, I think it's hard to peg down what works for everyone. Um, I've had some customers through our dealers buy for a push mower six, eight amp hour batteries and then come back and say they've only needed two to get through the whole day. So they're sort of regretting spending that much. I mean, the dealer wasn't, obviously. Of course, yes. Um, Um, I sort of suggest start off and add to it. That's, that's a benefit with battery. Just keep adding your power source um, as you need it. Yeah. Well, I think the correct financial answer was to buy all the batteries in the world. From your yeah, perspective. Every single one. <laughs> I'm not doing a very good job. No. <laughs> all right. So the next ones I want to look at, um, I, I want to fly through the head trimmers, blowers and string trimmers because – I think what's really most people want to hear about this podcast is lawn mowers, dandelion mowers, things like that. And yep. uh, I'm still interested in this stuff. It's obviously essential for, for most businesses, especially blowers and string trimmers because you can't mow a lawn without them. So let's actually, let's start with the string trimmers. So whipper snippers, you know, is what yep. most Aussies what call everyone them. calls them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Every brand's got a different brush cutter. What do they call Brush them? cutter, string trimmer, line trimmer, whipper dipper. Now, the first thing I want to say that I do like is I like that you have a bladed edger, right? Like yep. some brands, uh, you know, and the tar- every brand's targeted different people, but, you know, you've got the range, you know, and it's, you can get all so of for- yeah, for our for our range, we definitely have gone just with purely with dedicated tools. So, the string trimmer, the uh, shaft edger, um, and then the you know in the whole range, we've got just hedge trimmers. Um, our edger actually is one of the products that um, we didn't launch when we launched in the market, just because it was going in for its generational upgrade. So, right, yep. I think we touched on how long commercials been overseas for since 2016. So, a lot of our hand tools are on their third generation. Some are in their fourth now. So, that one will be available early, like Q1 next year, as its upgrade. Uh, we just didn't see a point in bringing it to market with an older gearbox and design so but jan february next next year yeah really feb, february some february march somewhere that we should see it here um it's yeah. just been finished and into mass production now for the u.s market and for our market so for all intents and purposes is it a whippersnipper with a different head on or is it actually quite a different machine um so the motor that drives it's pretty close to what's on our 1.2 kilowatt string trimmer yep. um but they've done a lot of um efficiencies in the uh, gearbox which is uh runtime performance um yeah. with to to get the best performance out of the unit and that's where a lot of the you know a brushless electric motor can be, be improved but a lot of the uh efficiencies do come in the the rest of the unit the gearbox and whatnot so yeah and uh, being <clears throat> being straight shaft it is well, well, bench shaft, most people consider that a residential style and some people like them, some people, you know, hate them. But you've got the straight shaft there. How would that go? Here's the thing. The question you always get is runtime, right? Now, hedge trimmers, we know they're not as a power sapping. We know that blowers and whip snippers are very power sapping. What about an edger though? Because it's kind of one of those things where if you're doing an overgrown job, 
it needs a lot to get through some of these overgrown edges. But then the light stuff, you hardly do anything. It, it, it probably could run for seven weeks or something like that, you know? It's it's exactly that. If you're cutting in a brand new edge or some, you get to a job and someone's just never done an edge there before, then you're definitely going to chew the battery exactly like you'd chew a tank full of fuel. But if you're turning up to the fortnightly mow um, and you just want to trim it up, then yeah, you'll, you're going to the runtime will vary drastically. How would you, how, if you're saying the people you're talking to out in the industry have got this, how many amp hours do they need to get through a day of regular fortnightly work? With the trimmers? Oh, just with the edger to start with? Oh, the edger we haven't got on market here yet. Oh, that's so. true. Yes, of course. Yeah. What I are the Yankees um, saying? Do you know what um, the Americans are saying? No. Yes and no. Obviously, their market and what they do over there is a, a bit little different. bit different how they cut too, but... Um, most of the guys on established lawns, like a four amp hour is more than enough if they're doing 10 yeah. to 12 lawns a day. They've got plenty left. So um, it's just that non, non-established non edge is going to chew it up because you're using just so much more energy to drive it. Yeah. And that's the thing I think when most people are interested in with, with the battery tech because I think we all understand and respect that, that commercial brands are going to be able to do the fortnightly stuff, right? To be fair some non-commercial brands could probably do the fortnightly stuff. It's more probably how long that machine would last being beaten up in commercial conditions, you know, not necessarily whether they can actually cut the grass or not. But where a commercial thing's really considered commercial in most people's opinion is how it tackles overgrown, beaten up, you know, getting thrown in out of a ute, getting left in the rain. What are the bodies? Let's start with the beaten up side. How are these going to handle sliding around the back of the ute, you know, being dropped? Um, is that something that you test and, and really think about when you're going through that stuff? Yeah, definitely. And this is something that um, I'm glad you brought up because something we feel very passionate about at Greenworks is we didn't just whack a commercial uh, name on on this stuff and throw it out there and say it's suited for the contracting market and the commercial side of the industry um, underneath the skin. They're totally different. To, I mean, we got plenty of guys and we touched on it with the 60 volt stuff, plenty of commercial users in that range. Mm-hmm. Um, but the, eight, the 82 volt stuff is factory tested for a thousand plus hours for all the moving componentry on the hand tools. Um, magnesium gearboxes on the hedge trimmers and the bottom of our chainsaws and um quite a few other products that are coming in the pipeline but also the design uh most of the hand tools are either ipx4 or ipx5 majority is still ipx4 in the current generation but the new upgrades will be ipx5 which is you can pretty well i don't suggest this but you could put it underwater if you wanted um is that with the battery in or battery out Oh, that'd be the the gearbox head or the power head i i couldn't tell you exactly from the top of my head i I wouldn't do it anyway. I'm a bit old school still like that. Even if they said it could be done, I probably wouldn't do it. Um, I had um, I had some people come to my house and I had some some stuff left out in the back of the ute and it was raining. And they were like, what are you doing? And I was honestly, man, they say it's commercial. You know, and yeah, I'm going to take it if it's heavy, heavy rain. But I'm just like, I just, yeah, I kind of feel like, I don't know, maybe I'm a bit dumb for doing this, but I'm like, man, it, sh- it should be able to handle a light shower. Like, yeah, oh, if, I, if I've got them on the Defender Rack and I'm driving down the freeway and it's just going to start showering, like, obviously, we, you, you, most people are not going to work in thunderstorms and stupid stuff. And, you know, we don't whippersnip the seaweed, you know, in the Bass Strait. But, yeah. the you know, like, just that light rain stuff, are you confident that it's going to handle a long period of time of, Every winter, it gets kind of a little bit wet, and you know, as long as it's respected, it, it can handle that kind of work. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If as long as it's um exactly what you said, if it's respected, it'll handle that. It'll handle being out in the sun all day. Um, excuse me, it'll handle. Um, we're probably the worst testing things before we bring it to market. We didn't just throw this range out there for the last year. It's been thrown in the back of cars and trailers and utes and given to a quite a lot of. Uh, users around Australia to, to, to put it through the paces because if there's one thing, well, there's plenty of things we do well in Australia, but it's one thing we definitely test lawn and garden equipment and put it through its paces. Um, I remember a, 
a long time ago, I used to sell Hustle. I sold Hustle Zero Turns and we had their, yep. one of their big engineers come over and he just couldn't believe what we do to the mowers here um, <laughs> yeah. and how many blades um, PLP would go through uh, to our market um, just purely because we cut different and we treat them different, but it's we a good test short, for the yeah. product. Yeah. Yeah, and people will buy a 48-inch Hustler Raptor and they will throw it as if it was a flail mower on a vacant block. And yep. uh, it's and like no, it. no Aussie contractor is blinking an eye at that idea. <laughs> yeah, no. that's that's fine. You know, that's normal. Talking yeah. about these big, uh, big vacant blocks, have you personally been able to do any usage yourself with these on that type of – these whip simmers I'm talking about or string yeah. trimmers? How did you? Um, so, how did you honestly feel, and how did it compare? You got a one point two kilowatt. For those listening, there's two options: a bull handle or a bike handle one, uh, which is two kilowatt, and you've got a one point two kilowatt standard, kind of what most people would expect from a whip zipper. How did they handle, and what did they feel like compared to your your classic, most common petrol varieties? Um, oh, you go with um. The 1.2 kilowatt, that one was probably the most recent upgrade before we launched the unit. So it was one that we did a lot of testing on. Power to weight wise, that unit, um, even though the 2 kilowatts got more power, the 1.2 definitely has better power to weight and RPM out of the head. So that's one I've tested pretty thoroughly. Um, mm-hmm. The uh, the um, time honored T230, T260, um, or, or, or a still um, FS. 85 or a 94 um it definitely is probably on par or better more power than those i i I believe anyway um those other petrol products are something i've had a fair bit to do with in my previous time in the industry um our 1.2 kilowatts got a 6000 rpm head speed so it definitely spins um spins at a rapid rate uh we use a air air um we a fan cooled shaft so it actually blows cool air down the shaft to cool the uh the motor at the bottom so a lot of problem you do here sometimes with battery uh trimmers and especially with the motor down at the bottom as they get hot um so with this generation greenworks put a little cooling fan so it actually cools nice. it while it's operating as well as well as a little fan underneath the gearbox as well so uh but yeah performance wise uh we use a very narrow guard um pretty sure it's a 16 inch diameter Sorry, I don't know all the specs. They are all up there, but um, uh, so we don't um really see the need for um anyone to have to remove the guard. We use a as narrow as possible, um, to give the widest uh cutting uh, diameter, but also the best vision as well when you're doing your edging. So, yeah, well, some people are going to take it off anyway. We all know that they will. It's we <laughs> we know it's going to happen, um, but we try to alleviate it where we can. Uh, the bull, the bob wire or the bike handle one, that one is a, is a beast of a unit. Um, uh, both have variable speed triggers. Uh, that one's a bit slower on the RPM. I think it's only around the fifty five hundred. Um, it will get upgraded at some stage, but. Um, Obviously, most guys in the kit, like you said, will always have a loop handle. Not too many um, mm-hmm. see the need the the bike handle uh, sales. I think even in in the consumer part, I know it was for myself and a lot of dealers. Loop handles sort of dominate the sales these days. Yeah, of course. Um, They're both kind of more versatile. Field, you know, I I think most people would take the maneuverability of a loop handle, and uh, you know, the speed from there at most yeah. residential jobs. And then slow down a little bit on the big overgrown stuff. Yeah. If you're going to get one machine, you know. Yeah, that's right. I mean, if you're doing a heap of commer- like a heap of overgrown stuff, or it's all hilly all the time and not much edging, then it makes it's a no-brainer to get a bike handle. But most most guys aren't doing that all the time to justify the, that investment. With head trimmers, I just want to talk about basically two things real quick because yep. my understanding is um, essentially. You, you don't need as, as good a motor. You don't need as, as long-lasting a battery because the, the mechanism is not as draining on those components. That's from, correct. From my, in my opinion, a lot of it is – two things that's important is the quality of the actual blades themselves and how easily serviceable uh, they are. And you've got – for those who are listening, you've got three options. You've got a 26-inch kind of your normal handheld hedge trimmer. 
you've got a short pole hedge trimmer and you've got a telescopic pole hedge trimmer. And well, which one's most popular out of those three? Because they're quite, you, you, it's quite different, you know? All quite different. Um, so the dead, there is a fourth one that'll be on the market Ooh. next year, which will be, so our dedic- current dedicated or handheld hedge trimmer runs off a corded system. So uh, the market's 50% people hate cords and backpack batteries and mm-hmm. 50% want that so um our battery on board uh hedge trimmer will be very similar to that unit just with the battery on board but Mm -hmm. that was going in for an upgrade just before we launched so we haven't got that on market yet but currently the sell-through we're seeing has predominantly actually been the corded hedge trimmer um the dedicated there and then we've only just had the telescopic one come on in the last month and a half so um telescopic one we're definitely getting a lot of feedback being that it's articulated in the head um and that's probably feedback we've had our short pole hedge trimmer it's a fixed gearbox so right um we have been asked to see if we can get articulation added to that unit right and yeah that kind of stuff is really good with tall hedges getting the top whilst you're standing yeah all three units all run 4,300 strokes per minute, so very high uh, blade speed, very high quality double-sided blades, um, magnesium gearboxes, greasable, uh, so it touches on that maintenance as well. Um, just on that maintenance and spare parts, you know, they're all driven by a cam gear inside, so they're all replaceable as well. So, uh, do, the, so do the head trimmers... You might have just said this, and I was missing because I was thinking about something else. But the uh, are the blades the same across the three of them? So it's like the, plug and play. Pretty much the dedicated and the telescopic, from memory, run the same twenty-six inch blade, and the short poles a small bit different, but it's very similar. They're all pretty similar across. The so range. I'm getting it. If you were to get the on battery on board twenty-six when it came out, and you had a battery on board telescopic pole hedger, and you were to buy a spare set of blades just in case something went wrong, it could cover both. Yeah. Yeah. Fantastic. Cause I think that's for me, a lot of people will, you know, they kind of put their head trimmers through things that they probably shouldn't put their head trimmers <laughs> through, but you're a commercial operator and you just got to get it done, you know, and not everyone's made out of money to buy every single tool you can possibly get. And I've been there, you know, you just got to throw them in some sketchy situations and having, <laughs> you know, replacing the blades, is cheaper than, you know, throwing oh, yeah, throwing rubbish and replacing is cheaper than buying two. And yeah. I forgot to ask as well, what are the pricings on the, the before we move on let's, to the blowers? The yep. Let's say we'll go a telescopic pole hedger, just that one. I'm going to, for telesc- those listening, I'm just going to create a list, a shopping list, as if someone was starting out from scratch buying this kind of gear. So the telescopic pole hedger is six ninety nine. The short pole hedge is five forty nine, yep. And then the dedicated hedger, so the back, so that comes with the cord and the backpack harness. You just put your battery in it. Is seven ninety nine, right? So, so the the dedicated hedger too, um, it's got a rotating rear handle and it's got anti jam function and multiple speed mode. Oh, so, so it does have a few more features. It's got a lot more technology in it than the other two. The other two is just variable on your trigger. My feeling, my personal, I'm going to write down the 699 for the telescopic pole hedger. My gut feeling is that that's for somebody who's starting out and they need a hedge trimmer, that'll cover that's, everything. Probably won't be as efficient on the small stuff as a little handheld thing, but I'm just assuming you're not made out of a billion dollars and going to buy, I mean, you could buy everything on the list if you wanted to. Yeah, but, please uh, do. <laughs> of course. <laughs> now let's go to the blowers. Uh, a lot of people talk about blower stats. I'm not really a blower stats. I'm. Uh, I actually ran a BG56 for probably uh, seven years, and most contractors always start with that and usually have them still rolling around in the trailer or the ute anyway. Yeah, no, they, I mean they're just you know kudos to still. I mean they, it's just a, it just works right, and uh, it does, yeah, it's a yeah. petrol thing. You used to sell that kind of stuff back in the day, and uh, you know respect where respect is. Due, but the battery stuff that's it kind of kicks the butt of that kind of blower so the point i'm trying to get across is that i was pretty content for quite a long time doing maintain stuff 
I also had a back, backpack blower. But doing maintain stuff, I was pretty content with something that statistics weren't actually that great because I just had a couple of leaves to blow, you know, not car parks or anything. Yep. I'm assuming the stats on these things are, are pretty cool. Um, but how do they stack up? So you've got three. You've got the brushless axial blower, the dedicated blower, and a dual port backpack blower. Backpack. How do these guys stack up to the common blowers that we're actually using? Uh, because to me, the, some of the numbers, I, I don't really know what they mean. Yeah, so the numbers game, especially when you talk blowers, the speed of it, is important, but it's really the push force, the newtons and the uh, cubic meters of airflow that it does. But say uh, the two key ones for us that we sell through a lot in the market is the dual port one and the brushless axial. Um, Can I just tell you that? So why, what is the difference? Because a blush, brushless axial and a dedicated blower to me look really similar. Just staring they at They do. It. So the brushless axial blower has the battery on board. Oh, and okay. the dedicated blower has is a corded unit. So the first thing is weight. So the the dedicated blower you're looking at um, is just over two kilos, whereas the brushless axial I think is closer to three kilos. And then you've got the battery um, on top, is that right? And then you've got the battery on top of that as well. But the design of the brushless axial so is exactly that. It's a brushless motor, but we use an axial fan system. So... Uh, for the listeners, um, we suck our our air intake is sucked in. If you can, if you're watching via 270 degrees, so those fins you can see there go all the way around to the other side and underneath. So for the lefties of us, it doesn't matter. Whereas a petrol unit, you yeah, sucks use from... it on the left hand side, it sucks sucks in there, and you gets your shorts you know, in. Hopefully, yeah, shorts in. Whereas this, we can block three quarters of that, and we still won't lose much of our efficiency of the blower. Um, reduces noise. One of the big thing with battery, I mean, it still does have our, like every battery blower on the market, except for one we'll talk about very shortly. One of our new ones we're going to release next year. You do get that whistle, but um, yeah, definitely a lot of, uh, one of the most common uh, blowers in most of the contractors kit. It will um, do what that does and more. Well, you're saying it on here, creating 30 30- 38% more power than a 27cc petrol blower, meaning users are able to blow away 70% more leaves. I don't know how that math works. 38% more power equals 70% more leaves. I was just reading that and I've read that, um, the specs and that about a thousand times. So that doesn't make much sense to me. <laughs> you, obviously, um, you obviously didn't write it. <laughs> somebody, somebody uh, I didn't, but I have office. proofread this a hundred times. But yeah, someone at head office, uh, I'm going to drop our overseas team in that one. Um, Tell them, listen to the I, podcast. I'd say, yeah, listen to the podcast. Yeah. And um, but yeah, basically, we're, we're generating the way the axial cyclone force, uh, the way we do it, it generates more power than its 27cc equivalent. So the only thing with battery blowers, as we all know, is that they are very power demanding. Um, um, so t- do you have. Uh, an idea on how much runtime or how many batteries a contract's going to need for an average day? Uh, in the dual port charger, I would recommend starting with a minimum of two and, and an eight amp hour, but you'd probably want four eight amp hours if you're doing a, a lot of blowing all day. Oh, sorry. Just to guarantee. I changed the photo to the dual port, the backpack one, but I meant yeah, the sorry, guys. Port. Yeah. Yeah, the hand hand one, you'd want to, I'd definitely go two or three, four amp hours. You're going to get oof, anywhere between 30 minutes or 20 to 25 minutes, 30 to 35 minutes with standard, or we do have a turbo button, so 20 to 25 with that held down, but that's constant blowing. So you imagine most jobs, you're just sort of giving it a hit here, a hit there. Um, you probably get four four or five jobs out of one but one battery depending this is going to upset people but we, we we need to be keeping this to some sort of slow time uh oh, you know low time sorry not be talking about for 10 years but i've got one question about this dual port backpack blower <clears throat> how does it compare to the powerful commercial end of the backpack blower range whether that's a steel and an echo a uh you know that kind of <clears throat> 
big backpack stuff that people are used to using because a lot of these numbers, like yep. I say, it's, it's this, it's that, it's whatever. But out in the field, when you're using it, how's it feel? How much blowing is it getting compared to those guys? Um, obviously, as I mentioned, I'm a still man. So I'm oh, sorry still, but I'll probably compare it to that one. Uh, this current dual port backpack blower is equivalent to probably the BR600, so around that 60cc, 55cc backpack blower. Yep. Um, not too sure what the Husky model is, but that's sort of the feedback we've been given from the market. Um, definitely a lot of power, 300 k's an hour again. Like I said, the speed of it is too variable and it's not really that important. Um, our new one that was just released at equip will be just as good as the uh br800 or the big mariama one or the big husky one as well uh, so what's uh, um and a lot quieter quiet okay so what uh price point is that real big one because i'm looking at this you'll put one at, at 600 dollars, and obviously you've got to have the batteries as well but once you've already bought the batteries that's actually really competitive compared to most cool. backpack yeah. blowers you know yeah. Um, the new one, I don't have any pricing yet. We only just had our um, meeting with our international team today, actually. So um, I don't have pricing yet, but um, we are very competitively priced in the marketplace. So I can't imagine it will be, it's obviously going to be a bit dearer than this one, but um, definitely won't be out of the ballpark. So what you're telling me, and we've heard it here first, it's going to cost two Zinger boxes, I believe. Yeah, two. That's our financial With system on this one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't ask you the price point of the string trimmers and the... Um, uh, no, no. So let's touch on the edger as well. So um, the string trimmer, so we most of our tools we sell uh, in skin and you buy the battery and charger just because... Um, everyone's going to have a different setup. And if we sell it in kits, you're going to end up with having so many charges. And yes, yes. we offer obviously a solution for that. So, but with the 1.2 kilowatt string trimmer, we figure most people, if they're starting, are probably going to dabble with a string trimmer to add to their fleet. So the skin on that one is $4.99. Yep. But we do offer it in a kit with two 4 amp hour batteries and a dual port charger for eleven ninety nine. So people should start with that by the sounds of it if that's the first I would one start with that it because it's about five hundred dollars saving if you bought all the items individually. Right. That sounds good to me. Yeah. Um and two four amp hour batteries as I touched on, like you should get most of what you need to do on a domestic run in one day. And what was the edger? Um, Just quick maths. The edger is six forty nine. Okay. Now let's go on to the, the lawnmower stuff. Unless you had something else to say that you. Yeah. No, no, no. I was just going to say the uh, the bull bar, the bike handle is six twenty nine. Okay. So when we look at the lawnmowers, <clears throat> I like that you've got three different sizes because I think a lot of people have obviously the twenty one inch self propelled is very safe for a business to do it's risky to put out a 25 it's kind of risky to put out a 30 because the market is a lot of the contractors are going to want to buy a machine that is most usable right and some people will go out and get the bigger ones but you know it's real interesting to have those options and to think about them um what kind of power difference are you getting between the three of them? Is it simply that, like, for example, they've got the same kind of motor but just bigger decks or is that is the motor designed or, or engineered specifically for that machine? Uh, yeah, no, between the three, they're all pretty different motors on, on the unit. So um, the 21 inches obviously – um, designed for most people have that 21 inch mower uh, in the, in their kit so that one there uses a 2000 watt motor from memory so it's about 160 c sorry 3.4 kilowatt brushless sorry mate my specs are all over the shop today i clicked them up so, um, and look to be yeah. to be fair it is what almost nine o'clock at night where you are right now it is yeah so you've done a full cool um, work day and you've come and you've have to deal with my face being on the <laughs> oh it's it's been i've been looking forward to it all day so um <laughs> yeah so the the motor on that one is different to the 25 and then the motor on the 30 inch is vastly different and a hell of a lot more powerful 
um, than than the, the two those other two. Um, to be honest, we're doing some things. Um, Greenworks are very very uh, receptive to our marketplace. Mm-hmm. Um, we touched on this in our previous uh, our chat before we started that you know sometimes we haven't seen as much product that we should for our market um or it takes years for a manufacturer to bring it here yeah um or they won't change something because i mean um i've heard it so much over the years i'm sure we all have you know we're two percent of what the u.s put out yeah so exactly um but we're very lucky with greenworks they are very receptive to um changes and um and adapting to our market conditions um so this particular mower here in its current form will will have some changes going forward, um, which I can't share too much at the moment just because we're in sort of safety uh, I'll, phase before. I'll tell the people it, but... there's a there's an esky that goes right on there. <laughs> you know how he has his seven falls esky right on the back there is where the esky is going. And there's actually a deep and fryer a... in front as well. So lunch is cool. Yep. Yep. That's why they've got me on the product development team because the ideas like that. No, I'm joking. No, but the some of the features of this unit, it's a dual port battery setup, so it doesn't need two batteries to run, but okay. it does have capability of using two, and it'll automatically switch between the batteries. So when one goes flat, it'll switch to the other one. So um, obviously, I said before about when we're talking about batteries, we recommend eight amp hour batteries for best runtime performance, mm-hmm. um, and that unit also auto governs itself. So. For most uh, maintained lawns, it'll spin at 2,800 RPM. Uh, but if it does hit the thicker stuff, it'll lift itself up to 3,200 RPM yep. and then drop itself back. So yeah, um, what's being battery self-propelled, uh, most feedback, a lot of guys don't even use that function because they're so light already. Okay, well, I was going to ask, like, what's the what's the speed on that? Because one of the things I've thought, and I have no idea how these are made, right? But like, do they, I'm assuming they have a different motor that drives the wheels then yeah, the blades, so the blades right? Because yep. so yep, yep, just correct. to start with, there's no gearbox that is going to have problems like there has been with so many other petrol brands where they're running belts or drive we, shafts off an engine. We, yeah, so we don't. We still have a gearbox on the 21 and the 25 to drive the wheels, but we don't. We don't get our power from our motor via a belt or a or a shaft or anything like that, like other brands have had that problem. So we just have a electric motor um, that drives the gearbox and then electric motor that drives the blades. So, so um, yeah. Uh, I'm looking at this. Um, I've been writing these notes down. It sounds like at the moment we're about, <clears throat> we talked about it, hedger, blower, you know, edge or whippy. We're kind of looking at about six batteries to run a day so far. That'd be fairly safe for a day. I would start. Um, what about with a start 21 inch self propelled mower? Because I kind of feel like this is, you add this to the kit, and that is the essentials kit that we're looking at. Yep. How many eight amp hour batteries would get you through 10 to 12, you know, 150 ish average square meter blocks? I mean, lawns, not blocks. <laughs> blocks, yeah, yeah. I would start with two, maybe go three, right. just to. Just to see how you go. That's been the feedback with um, some end users that have come back to our dealers or even myself or some of our other team because we obviously have been around the country quite a bit with this range. Um, yep. A lot of guys have started with two. Some have started with four. Or we had, like I said before, a couple started with six and they're just like, I didn't even need anywhere near yeah, yeah, that yeah. sort of range. Well, yeah, better to have it than and not need it. Well, yeah, that's right. That's right. So. And how many, So what's the price on two of those bigger batteries? Seven thirty nine each. So, 1500. just for argument's sake, it's fifteen hundred bucks. Yeah, I reckon that's a pretty good range for someone who's starting out. Um, I'll do the maths and let everybody know at the end what we're talking about with that. Now, I think the twenty five. My guess is you're getting a lot of interest in the thirty because you know bigger is better. We all know that, but I think the twenty five yeah. is for people who do larger blocks but still have access issues. If you could only buy one. That's a pretty interesting mower, you know? The Definitely. The 25 has probably been the one we're seeing a lot of interest purely for um, – we'll talk about the weight of the 30 in a second and why it, why it is that. But the 25 is only a couple hundred dollars dearer than the 21. Um, but you're gaining the efficiency of an extra four inches a cut. And we all know um, that everyone loves an extra four inches. 
<laughs> yes, we do. And being efficient while doing it. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> um, with our 25 inch, it is a little bit light, uh, smaller motor on there. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a counter, it's dual blade. So it's not a single blade like the 21 and they're counter, counter rotating. So right. they rotate, rotate inwards. So, um, on our 21 inch, it's a three and one mower. So it's a mulch catch and side throw, yep. but on the 25 and 30, we can only mulch or catch. We can't shoot it out the side cause the blades rotate inwards. Yeah. Um, yeah. This is one of the ones where I talk about, they listen to the market. So when we launched our range um, in Australia, we only had the uh, US model. Um, well, it was for our market, but I think the lowest height of cut was 30 or 35 oh, mil, which, sweet. you know, yeah. most, no, most, uh, most of uh, pop. Don't turn me off just yet, guys. We're getting to the good stuff. Um, it's 30, this it's one 34 now. now. Uh... <laughs> yeah. No, this one here has dropped down to 25. Sweet. Um, so that's sort of something we went back and said, guys, we really need this for our market. Um, so they've definitely listened to that. Um, and we're working on a retrofit for anyone that's purchased the uh, higher cut one as well. So uh, the beauty about this one, it's gear driven. Um, so the, the electric motor drives two gears inside the casing there. Uh, so you get a nice high speed cut um, oh, and being yep. tight, gear driven and counterclockwise, a nice finish as well. So... Um, yeah, this one's gaining quite a bit in the market. It's a pretty compact design um, while being that wider cut. Well, the double blades is interesting, right, for sure. And it does – there's something about the finish on those double blade systems, whether that's a massive ride on lawnmower all the way down to, you know, something around this side. So, yeah, that's fascinating. Um, I will just ask as well, is there a way – now, you would never recommend this, but some of us are going to do it anyway – if we wanted to drop this down real low, right? Because, like for example, some people might be doing lawn renovations, um, and they want to scout want down. To scale. Is there a way where you could, for example, put smaller wheels on, or do something like that? Or am I asking the wrong person? Because you'll get in trouble if you suggest anything other than factory. <laughs> I cannot suggest anything other than factory, but I have heard. There are some ways of doing that, yes. All right. And uh, if you if you find somebody on the internet who looks like Gary, he may tell you. <laughs> it definitely wouldn't be yes, him, I though, do. for legal reasons. No, it's not me. Because this is not going public <laughs> on the internet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it won't be there forever in a day. <laughs> exactly, right. Uh, look, it's an hour and 20 in, so look, your bosses are probably not. Yep. <laughs> nah, he's, he's not the same. <laughs> he doesn't even know I'm doing it. <laughs> All right, the 30 inch. Now, you are right. It's twice the price for five more inches. Yep. Um, it looks like, man, what have you got? The space shuttle control panel on the top here? What's going on yeah, there? Yeah, so like we, this one is actually action packed, full of feature. Um, so where's the Esky? Uh, not there yet, but we could probably fit it on this one. The <laughs> This unit here is basically a miniature version with technology features of our big Optimus zero turns and our nice. stand on. So we, we don't utilize a gearbox or anything at all on this unit. The rear wheels are actually driven by independent hub motors. Oh, wow. Um, so each rear wheel has a hub motor on, on, on the back there, no gearbox. Um, we also utilize uh, blade uh, deck motors. So individual blade motors rather than, um, driven off the electric motor uh, and they provide up to 17 and a half thousand feet per minute blade tip speed. So this thing's built to take on the uh, bigger competitors in the 30 inch petrol market, not the, uh, the, the one that most guys have in their kit. Um, the number one bit of feedback we've had, and there's quite a few guys that have bought these or, and have definitely demoed them is the weight of it. This one weighs, it's 80, 80 kilos without batteries. So, it's got some weight in it, but again, if it suits your business model and um, and what you're doing in your business, and um, yeah, it's definitely uh, definitely something to think about. Um, Ninety liter catcher. Uh, it's got five five speeds. I think the fastest speed's nearly seven and a half kilometers an hour. So, oh, that's like um, that's definitely- jogging pace. Yeah, it's jogging pace. Um, it's got auto blade sp- speeds, but it also has high and low as well, so you can override that. 
Um, yeah, it's built built like a weapon. This thing. What I'm really interested. Uh, Eighty kilos. It's interesting because. <clears throat> So, like, we've talked about this many times on the podcast. We've got Mo Masters. My Mo Master 26-inch, which is four inches smaller, is, I think, 160 kilos, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. So, yeah. It's, we're not. No, yeah, you're, we're nowhere near you're not that heavy. <laughs> yeah. and I, I, when people yeah. first start using them, the Mo Masters, that is, they're like, what the hell? It takes about a month, right, of, of use to get, get used, used to, to them. It. But then there are actually benefits for a cylinder mower, with the weight, which is a nice true flat yeah. cut, it doesn't it doesn't float across the surface and kind of you know let the thatch stay there. It's, yeah, you, you benefit from the weight. Yeah, and I, I, what I'm getting at is is I I don't even notice the weight. I use a 22 inch Mo Master now, which is probably 110 or something like that, right? And it feels fine because I'm so used to the big machines. So I can definitely I'm just vouching for uh, that at some point it's you know, if you use a 50 kilogram or so, I think that's what the you know, Hondas, Bush Rangers. The Hondas and that are like 50, 55 kilos. Yeah, something, something like, like that. that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're if you're used to that, yeah, like 80 is another, you know, 60% more weight. But if I, I have a feeling that a lot of WA guys running MEYs, Mo Masters, things like that would probably be like, you know, it's, still, be like, it's still light, what's that? you know, and you do yeah. get used to it. I don't know. I've never used this one, but I'm sorry. I can't vouch whether you would get used to this one. I'm just saying that it's one of those things where stats don't tell the whole story. Like I said, if it was 80 kilograms on the front axle, it would be horrible, you know. Yeah. Maybe there's a balance there. I don't know. Yeah. This one in particular, we offer three different height settings on the handle. So if anyone's listening and has a has one of these in their kit, put it on the middle on the middle hole on the rear handle setting there. Yep. Um, that makes it maneuver about – 80% better than if you go to the, the first one. The low one. Um, they're all rubber-coated wheels. Um, yeah, it is It is definitely just a miniature version of, of, of a zero-turn mower. That's cool. Um, is that a light bar there? It is a light bar. It does have a light bar. And I don't know why they have this as a feature, but um, it has reverse. Um, and I think our claim was it's one of the only ones in the US, they say, to have a reverse gearbox function um yeah so that if it you, beeps when you go backwards you have it you have a stroke <laughs> and you fall over you can mow over your own feet <laughs> don't sue us <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I mean, look, to be honest if you if you have a stroke that's probably a bit strong of a way to put it strokes are quite serious uh yeah sorry people moving on um this is probably what people wanted me to talk about. And I'm sorry, people, it's taken us so long. But look, I hope you've enjoyed it so far. People want to talk about the battery stand ons, don't they? That's. They do. It's, they do. it's something but, sexy about them. I mean, and I mean that from a design standpoint. Like, I mean, obviously, battery stuff is, is cool and, and interesting. And, but I, I just think it's kind of like, I don't know. It, it, to me, it looks like something that would have, they would have put on Halo, the video game. Yeah, like it's yeah. a kind of like, yeah. where are the guns? The the light green. I should have gone. Needs I should have taken dark... one of these to my son's Halloween thing last week. Yeah, Damn it. dark it green really... with a bit of camo on it, and I mean, it could it could be the worst mower the world's ever seen. But if you're single, you've got an eighty four percent chance of getting a girlfriend. With you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to pay it. I'm just telling you. By the way, I should say yeah, I, I've been meaning to say this in every intro I'm doing. I'm not charged people. I'm not charging anybody to come on here. By the way, this is not like I just no. Yeah, anyways, it's just just a thing. <laughs> I've been meaning to put that in every single intro. Being like we're not in, unlike equip, we're not charging people to come on. We just want to have a chat. Yeah. I my subjective opinion is they look cool and yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. They're um they're definitely a beast. Our whole um Optimus Z range um is definitely look looks they look like a tank um uh, i don't want to be that guy but optimus is latin for the best which is kind of why they named it that so um the team that designed this unit wanted to make the best zero turn mower and stand on mowers on the market right. so um that's how it sort of got its name are all of these sizes available right now so 32 36 48 two different types of motors 52 different type, two different motors 62 different yep. types of motors they are all available. Um, as we all know, our market in Australia for stand-ons is in the smaller yep. width cuts. So the most interest we are getting and in what we 
our stock levels is in that 32 and 36 market. I totally understand why. Um, I to- yeah, it's just that that's especially over East. We're not there with the wider. It's coming. It's coming. The wider stuff is coming. Um, we keep the 48 on hand and then the 52 and 60. I think we've got one of each just for someone that wants wants one. But yeah. those, the 48, 52 and 60s are basically our zero turn mowers just with a stand on function. Yeah. Um, the compact stuff is exactly what you said. That's where our market is. So let's just go with the big one to start with. 60 inch, 24 kilowatt motor. What's the price on this? It's probably on the website. I could probably just click it. I've been asking you for the price. Uh, I'm going to click on the links. and No, no. So all the handheld stuff we have, uh, for some reason, our web team, and this is something I'll, because I have looked at the website that much, like I mentioned, we we don't have the prices on the stand on. So for um, your 24 kilowatt, 60 inches, $48,999. That's the one we got. Yep. Um, so 48000 and... You were saying before, we've got to give some context because you are buying your fuel up front. And so, yes. and that is including the battery in there. You don't have to pay anything more. Yeah, the battery. Yeah. So, all of our um, stand on or sit on mower range in the 82 volt commercial, the battery's already on board and it comes with a charger. Um, there was a thread about the 32 inch stand on, uh, I think it was last week. And um, a guy was saying, oh, you know, you've got to buy this. The charge is five grand more and what? this and that. It's just, it's not the case. It all comes, that price is go away and mow, you know, buy it at the shop, get it pre-delivered and um, charge it up and all well, the shop should have it charged for you and take it away. Um, so can we round, we, we say 45, 50 grand for a 60 inch. Is that right? Yep. In that range, just nice. Yeah, for, uh, for, yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. So your 18 kilowatts, so the one beside it there is 45. Okay. And then the 24 the twenty four kilowatts. So they're, they're both exactly the same mowers. It's just that obviously one has a smaller battery pack than the other, so runtime is less. All right. And the 32, so you should get a range of prices because we don't want to ask every yep. single thing. People can call up and no, no. they'll find out what's in the middle. So 32 price, 8 kilowatt amp. Kilowatt amp. What am I saying? <laughs> kilowatt hour. Kilowatt. Because we just talk. Yeah, we don't want to talk in amp hours with these big ones. Um, yeah, how many amp hours is that? Tw- don't answer. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty, Dumb question. Too late in the day for that. Yeah. <laughs> um, Twenty-two triple nine. All right. So somewhere between. Uh, yeah, you do your math on that. And when we talked before, yeah. go back to wherever it was in the podcast about the pricing on the fuel versus the battery stuff because you mentioned that with your sit down mowers um uh you know how much money you can save on the on that stuff obviously if you're thinking of buying this you're not going to make the decision solely on a podcast like this this is like a taster for you so you can contact and get more pricing and stuff like that i've got some questions about the practical stuff the number one thing i like when i'm looking at these is this little platform bin thingy not bin thingy yep how much weight can i put on that so on the 32 inch, um, that tray was on there, but we've taken it off just to save a bit of weight for stability. But on the 36, you can, and upwards, you can hold 110 kilos. Epic. And do you know why I was asking? It's because I have modified my Hustler Super S stand on that I've had for many years. Oh, yep. To yep, good, good stand on. I welded a frame, not to the actual thing i strap it down yeah. with proper tie points and everything but i have a welded metal frame that i put around the engine and i put a 100 liter spray tank, spray tank. on there yep. so it sounds like you wouldn't need all the fancy metal and you could probably put a 100 liter spray tank on there well, actually it's probably not you could you have to have some sort of frame people who are listening it's not big enough to fit that but you could probably fit a 50 liter on there laughing you could definitely fit a 50 or um something like that size on there um one of the questions we have been asked um especially on the compact stuff uh two things a catch pro fits up very very easily to these units so anyone that wants a catcher for one of these is that one but also running power obviously it's a battery powered unit how do we get 12 volts so on all the stand on and sit on product there is usb charges but we do have a 12 volt source for power depending on how much you need that can be 
fitted by the dealer. Awesome. So if you're the sort of person who's, say, doing a rural property and you want to spray your fence lines, you know, your 25, 30, 50 litre bit of glypho in there, you also have the option yeah. of, of being out. So the 48s, 50s, do they have more weight capacity or is it all the same? Uh, they are a little bit more on those and it's a, a bit wider platform, yeah, obviously, cool. too, awesome. because it's a bigger battery and a bigger, bigger storage space, yeah. We, see, because it's things like this, like I found, um, I think if we were being really honest, um, there's business and stuff like that, but uh, well, let's use pe- petrol-powered stuff. When I was looking at petrol-powered stand-ons, they're kind of similar like really kind of similar and it's kind of these one percenters like like for example most of the petrol power stuff is all using the same kawasaki engine you know and they're kind of using the same you know there's differences and all that sort of stuff and i, and I, I don't want to be disrespectful to brands because it isn't true that they're 100 the same but what makes a difference is the one percenters you know being able to have a yeah, platform definitely. on there it honestly it took me half a day to make the thing that I made and it was late at night. It was like six o'clock till actually close to midnight where I'm like welding and yeah, this okay. and that and going back because I want a frame that's metal that's strong enough and I'm not a very good welder. So it's a lot – It's it, to be fair, it's probably one hour of welding and six hours of angle grinding off my bad welds. <laughs> but what I'm getting at is like th- that's a real – there's certain people out here who are listening to this who go, oh, okay, that's interesting, you know. No more question. You're getting runtime. What What are you getting on these these machines? I'm. So let's start the, with the thirty two. Thirty. Yep. So the thirty two and the thirty six, both are eight kilowatt batteries. So we're going to get up to five hours runtime. So more than enough for a day's mowing. Yep. Uh, and charge time on that's three hours. All right. So. Um, and what type of lawn, what type of grass are we talking here? Um, you know, maintained lawn or maintenance cutting, definitely you'll hit that five hours. We've just had someone do a demo and then purchase one in Victoria. Uh, he did a mixture of, uh, lawns, but one day he did just all maintenance cutting. And I think he got s- nearly six hours, which he sh- probably shouldn't have because sh- theoretically the five hours. Yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, a mixture of lawn and that you might see four to five hours if you're doing something that might be. Uh, 30 or 40 centimetres thick, you know, sort of that foot, foot and a half uh, versus um, kept lawn. And I would say, if, practically uh, speaking, a 32-inch, the type of jobs you're doing with that also have a lot of edging, right? Yep. Whereas a 60-inch, yep. the types of jobs you're doing with that might literally just be on the mower all day. So yeah. if we, just for the sake of time, because people can ask every single little thing about these individually. So the two most popular ones mm. you get in about five hours – the big boy, 24, 60 inch. What's the runtime on that? Up to eight hours. Okay. So if you are the type of person who wants to do all day mowing. That's the one you want to look it's at. It's got the yeah. capacity for that. Yep, definitely. Um, we pretty well, we'll say eight hours of maintenance cutting and seven hours of thicker grass and heavier going. And oh, well, that's not, not, we've seen that. That's not that much of a difference. It's not that no, you kind of no, feel I've like it'd be hard, the, wouldn't it? But no. The wor- the worst I've seen uh, we tested was um, it did 11 acres uh, just on six hours um, and that was probably knee-high sort of paddock grass and the Victorian sort of mountains here. So um, it was working for that whole six hours. The operator didn't stop. I would feel as well um, um, that 11 acres – most people are not doing 11 acres of overgrown stuff. That's a very rare type right. of job. They're yeah. definitely doing 11 yeah. plus because that's four and a half hectares. We have a school yep. that we do which is close to two hectares and the oval is one hectare. We'll call it less than that. But yep. it takes a team of two basically the whole day to do everything, right? But the mowing, yeah, okay. it takes me an hour to mow the the flat oval right it's the fiddly yeah. moving around this and that you know and look it's you, you know it's uh, what i'm saying for those people who who don't have who don't do this kind of work you don't my guess is that there will be some people for sure that some people in the market who are doing 10 hours of overgrown stuff but they're probably also using a flower mower or a tractor or 
It's yeah, a, that's it's right. It's not really yeah, the kind of work that stand ons made for. So no. Although, you know, it's a billion different businesses. So I'm sure there's some outlier there who's gonna send us a message. Yeah. <laughs> so that's epic. So like even the smallest battery on the smallest get five hours, six hours kind of thing. And the biggest one, yep. full day mowing on the type of jobs that you would expect a stand on to do ninety eight percent of the time. Uh, is there anything else of note that um, is is unique, special, worth talking about? Um, well, it probably covers the stand-ons, but the um, the zero turns as well. So if you want to move on to them, and I can point out the couple of the features um, on the Optimus mower range, there's twenty five um, patents on the uh, technology and invention on that particular unit. Um, like I mentioned earlier, Greenworks Commercial's been on market in the US since 2016. Yep. So this isn't our first foray into battery mowers. This is actually the fourth generation. Um, it's its first new, it got completely redesigned, but some of the key ones, the key one is the battery is probably first and foremost. So we talked about the handheld batteries before and different lithium compositions, which most people know about, uh, but we use lithium phosphate in all of our uh, stand on zero turns in the side by side vehicle. So, uh, lithium phosphate, uh, one, obviously lasts probably the longest out of all lithium up to 2000 full charge cycles, uh, from zero to hundred percent. When it does get to its end of life, it only drops sort of 20% of its original runtime. Uh, and it's, um, smolders, it doesn't catch, catch on fire. So they're three, that's uh, a big the catch deal. on fire one you always bring up because yes. everyone brings it up. Um, but that's a huge thing. Um, but also, uh, talk about the warranty. So obviously we warrant the, the Optimus emails. We, we warrant them for 2000 hours or, or five years. Um, but it, even when you're getting to that, um, the battery still got a heap of life cycle in it. So your, your, um, your sale price, uh, is still going to re- hold its value you, as well. What I've found interestingly with, with mowers is, I mean, this is for the petrol power stuff. You don't really hear, I mean, you tell me from running a shop, you don't really hear about the the motor ever dying. It's always someone's hit a tree or the deck's rusted out or, you know, like, I mean, hit a tree with a blade, like a tree root or something like that, and they've broken a spindle. Like, that's the kind of yeah. stuff where things go wrong. So is that the same thing that we can expect from the battery with the motors and things like that? Pretty much this this unit here and our battery technology that we use, I would I would dare say the battery should be the last uh, the last item standing. Um, most commercial commercial uh, petrol engines, I know most guys if they look after them are seeing that you know two and a half three thousand hours, which is well beyond what that motor is probably designed yeah. to to last at. But the rest of the mowers had that much work that it's come time to move it on rather than. Re- keep reinvesting yep um obviously the benefits with with our product um just beside the battery we use uh we utilize a um it's a green greenwork specific design which is an in-hub wheel motor so we don't use um two large motors to drive the rear wheels they they use a i don't want to get too technical but a planetary gear dot type setup so we save a lot of space at that rear end but get a lot of torque and a lot of uh, a lot of efficiency, which is how we get the long run time as well. All right, mate. I want to talk about a few other things because we are yep. we're going long. Yeah, we're. we're. <laughs> I'm going to do some pause. I'm going to pause this, do some maths. I'll give you some pricing on uh, what it would cost to set up with Greenworks. All right, people. So I've just done some maths and to get uh, the six batteries that Gary was recommending, head trimmer, lower the 21 inch mower the whip sipper with the kit so it's going in the batteries getting you a cheaper price there and an edger so the kit you kind of need mower edger whipper blower hedger standard stuff you're looking and the the bigger batteries for the mower or four of them uh no sorry two of them uh you're looking around the seven and a half eight a little bit more a little bit less depending on what you're looking at um and so that's just look that's a big investment for some people but you know what you're going to have to spend it at some point anyway. So uh, for those who are interested in it, that's kind of what you're looking at. And if you want a little bit more information. All right, so Gary, 
we want to talk about this sort of stuff. We are going long in this one, but I guess it's just the, the sheer range you have. It just takes a while to talk about this yeah. sort of stuff. You have some exciting stuff coming out as well. And we're going to talk about a few of them. I've got some pictures on the screen. This was a, a released or announced at the Equip Expo, the uh, you know, uh, uh, thought, uh, was it, uh, the stimulator for this entire series. You've got a 20 – well, you described to me. What are we looking at in front of me right here? Uh, it's a, so right there is our new uh, mower to our commercial mower range. Um that is a 22-inch yep. alloy base hub, in-hub gear-driven, so very similar to our 30-inch uh, mower that's going to be launched in 2024. So It's got uh, it's got the same controls. Is this a 30-inch next to it? That's the 30 beside it. So you've got your 30 and then we've got our, our 22-inch there. So obviously being all alloy base, um, this unit, uh, we're definitely seeing this one being a real contender in the in the commercial market in that size. Not taking anything away from our current twenty one, um, but this one definitely ticks a box for durability and and power and performance as well. Um, I don't have too much in terms of pricing because as as um, the basis for your podcast, but obviously what equips all about is showcasing what's coming in the industry, but. One thing I can definitely guarantee what we do is we do our due diligence and test the product, but we try and get it here as soon as we can. I think it'll be about five zinger boxes. So It could be up there, yeah. I think it'll be worth that though. <laughs> um, no arguments here. It definitely, <laughs> Any Lord Morris is definitely, worth five zinger boxes. Yeah. <laughs> oh. It'll definitely be a dual dual port battery setup awesome. um looking at a 3200 rpm blade speed i believe it's going to be 17,000 feet per minute constant um waiting on a bit more information but i'll have some samples here testing very shortly um and we'll definitely make sure it ticks our low cut uh box for yeah, our market as well uh, that's one of the things about the america stuff which really frustrates me because type of work we're doing like we, we do rotary mo you know for certain properties and it kind of like my lawn is 15 millimeters with a cylinder and that's that's not yep. low for a cylinder like i've done it sub no. 10 before uh it's just a lot of work to keep it sub 10 but you know like the americans are just so they cut so high but you then you got to understand that the brands sometimes to redesign the entire mechanisms like you know, you come back to two percent, so it would be epic. Yeah, my my, if you could get it to fifteen mil, it'd be awesome. I'm not gonna force you to though. <laughs> there might be six single boxes. Six single box. It'd be worth <laughs> it. What have we got here? This is a flipping big chainsaw bar. It is. So we didn't touch on much of our saw range. No, we didn't. But we can't. No, that's my do bad. It. Sorry. But look, yes. Uh, we've got there's too much to talk about, but we currently have a 2.7 kilowatt and a 3.4 kilowatt chainsaw in our range. So the 3.4 blade speeds like 25 meters per second. It's pretty well close to a, I think a 60, 62, 63 cc. So you're pretty decent size mm -hmm. petrol equivalent. This one is they've named it. Um, as only Americans can come up with some names, a hog saw, so our high output gasless. Um, do you know what so I reckon they did? Point... They started with the word hog and they had to find three and they tried letters to make it, to work. Make it fit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I'll have to find out who was on that team and that project. Um, I reckon they were, in, they were but... in Kentucky or Alabama. That's why that's where they were yeah, based. Yeah. <laughs> this wasn't a California but or it... New York decision. <laughs> no, definitely not. But this one will be close to the 70cc petrol equivalent. Uh, I think we're going to see nearly 30 meters per second chain speed, which is just off the charts. Uh, we'll probably only bring it here in a 20 or a 24 inch configuration. That seems to be what our market is. But yeah, this thing's an absolute beast. Um, again, I'll have my samples here for testing and put it to the professionals to give us their feedback. Um, battery chainsaws you know really revel in the fact of running off an electric motor because you get instant torque yep. so um 
Yeah, definitely a good performer. I think it will sap the battery between you, me, and everyone else here, being 4.3 kilowatts of power, but um, I think it'll be worthwhile. The thing about battery chainsaws, though, there's two things. My father-in-law bought one from a competitor of yours, actually, but he is the sort of guy who has a real property. And uh, look, it was a resi one as well, so it wouldn't, wouldn't come close to any of this power, but he's got a real property. And the thing about it is you don't use your chainsaw for about a year. Do you know what I mean? And then you use yeah. it every day for about three weeks when you're in your real property and yeah. you don't use it again. Yeah, it's kind of like that. And petrol of engines, man, you forget to take the fuel out and it's old fuel and it's so annoying to start a chainsaw, you know, and battery, my goodness, like just put it in and go. And I think a lot of the yeah. contractors listening to this, they may not need the world's most powerful uh, hog saw, uh, but – you know the the battery chainsaw stuff. Just it's just a smart move to have something like it. Def it just cut, yeah, cut what's needed. You know, definitely. Um, just on the fuel thing, like that's another big thing for. Um, you know, uh, our fuel is probably one of the better fuels in the country in the in the world uh, market. But number one thing I saw, and most uh, mower shops would see through their workshops, is fuel related issues and yeah. like you said chainsaw is one of those ones that just sit and then oh i've got to use it for a bit and then it doesn't start and yeah i've told this story in the podcast before but i'm sure you've you've seen these all, all these things before but we had um some employees who were filling up two two stroke jerry cans and he forgot which one he'd put the oil in already and he put twice yeah. the oil in one and zero oil in the other and it ruined i would say eight hundred dollars worth of stuff like maybe a thousand dollars worth of stuff and one of them we got to run again but it was kind of like it didn't work so well after that just them yeah. but yeah a blower and a, yeah. a blower and a combi engine went to be with the lord done um, <laughs> all right so massive chainsaw coming we didn't say when are these coming out or did we say and i missed it um, so most of these are coming. We will see those probably second half of next year for our market for next spring. Epic. Definitely the, um, this blower probably will be a bit sooner, uh, possibly, but the other two will be second half of next year. IPX5, so very waterproof. Um, I have no idea the airspeed, the clearing volume or the, what the Newton meters mean. So how does it compare so this is, to um, the, 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 the big commercial stuff that we already used the Petrobras? The big commercial so. stuff as good or um, better. Uh, the feedback we've had with our current testing with this unit on its high output mode um, is that it, pardon the pun, blows the, uh, blows the rest away. Um, there's a few key things with this one. Um, I had to throw that in there. Got to get one dad joke out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, um, the key thing with this unit is they redesigned the um, the the blowing or the air intake, the impeller system. So it's actually a, a metal turbine in b behind the battery pack mm -hmm. at the bottom there. So on our low low power mode, our, our noise level on this one 65 decibels. So if you were doing uh, noise sensitive areas, nursing homes, retirements, around schools, um, you can hardly hear this thing on the low, low mode. Um, but when you ramp it up, it's a touch screen LCD screen. Um, That's fancy. It definitely... Uh, it definitely is a rocket ship. I need to um, get my office chair and do a, do a video, I think, with this thing blowing across the warehouse. That might be something I might do Friday lunchtime. <laughs> yeah. And the workers' compensation people will rock up right at that yeah. time. You know? <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> Insurance void. <laughs> uh, one of the things I was going to say, metal fan, right? So what you're telling me is you can chuck in some leaves and mulch it as well, hey? Like it's <laughs> Gary from Greenworks did not say that. Right. I, I would, I, I, even I wouldn't do that. That's 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 the inner thoughts that should never come out, kind of stuff. Um, dual port as well. Uh, we'll go back. Sorry, dual so, port. Yeah, so, yep, yep. Um, and an operator LED at the back. So if you were doing it, obviously a key benefit for a low noise unit is uh, earlier starts or later finishes. So True. it does have a red LED light. So if you were doing roadsides, you could be seen before. Yes. Um, Especially if your work shirts are black, and who would yes. pick that as a colorful work shirt? All right. Uh, okay. Hold so, a second. This is an additional thing, surely, isn't it? 
It is. That is our Optimus uh, blower attachment for our zero turns and our stand on mowers. So we have a power point at the front of all of our mowers, which we call an ETO or electric takeoff. Um, and see, as, see, just to um, pause you uh, there, that that was actually named after what it actually was. They didn't start with the word hog. No, they didn't. That, <laughs> they didn't that go was the actual. What they call it acronym? That was a real acronym, right? Yeah, that was. Yeah. <laughs> that was genuine. The um, other ones. Have been. <laughs> The other one, I don't think it definitely was not. Yeah. Um, this particular product here. Um, so obviously in the US, a lot of guys um, and I think um, a few companies make a kit to mount a petrol-powered blower yes, on, on the them. ZTRs and standards. Um, so with this unit, uh, we plug it in and then it can be operated from our touch screen and it's no different. draws the air in at the top and blows the debris away as well. Um we're doing a lot of development in this space with uh, using products off our power source out the front of that. Right. Um, that's the first one, but there's quite a bit in the pipeline. Interesting. Have you? We'll have to do another podcast on that. Yeah, I mean, well, my hope is to do this yearly. So if we get enough interest on in yep. this, then we'll see you again in 12 months. But definitely. Have you, um, with this blower, right? So. Is it because people were already using the blades to blast everything off the path? They are, yeah. So it kind of is just doing that, right? Like it's, uh, it kind of is. I mean, I I haven't seen so much of even the petrol backpacks mounted to units here. Most people just do exactly what you say. They get the blades and go along. And I mean, our our mower itself has a nineteen thousand feet per minute blade speed, so. I, I don't know how well we will move this. We, we've definitely been asked for it. Um, I just realized like feet per minute, actually, I mean, this, again, we're getting late and this is the thoughts that shouldn't come out. It literally sounds like you're cutting off people's feet. That's <laughs> actually the bloody American yeah, system. Why? It's efficient. Why? <laughs> I know. And it's, it's actually, I was talking with someone about this the other day. I'm like, you know, no one come, goes to a chain, like it goes for a chainsaw chain or says, oh, I want to, I want a 50 centimeter chain and bar. They go, I want a 20 inch bar and chain. Yes. Or we have 21 inch mowers. But, yeah, but um, do you know the reason we, why that is, in my opinion, is because the American system, which mathematically makes no, no sense, Englishly, which is not a word, but I'm sticking with it, it's all one syllable inch, mile, yard, feet. We're like meter, yeah. center, meter, millimeter, yeah, million. kilometer. Yeah. And that's why everyone's like, yeah. oh, it's just a couple of yards, a couple of miles. It's just easier to say. Anyways, yeah. we're completely going off track here. I was trying to keep this short. Have, yeah. I've just given up, all right? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but so you can cut off a lot of feet. If highly do not recommend this, but it's very fast. No. And please don't say to me you only cut off 18,400 feet. Don't try it. No. All right. It's getting late. It is getting late. <laughs> and it's not even late for me. Uh, but look, looking at all this, you've got a very fast, very capable mower coming out. And what time is that coming out? Uh, that mower, we've got that mower on market already. That blower attachment will be probably be second half of next year for our Optimus range as well. Yeah, is there anything else that I forgot to download? Is that is that the ones that you you went for? I think, I think that's about all I sent. Um, yes, it is. One thing we haven't quickly touched on, if you want to, um, we did talk about the uh, horizontal shaft mo motor. Yeah, so there were two things I wanted to talk about. Um, let's just do it. The first was a horizontal shaft. So what you would find on a cylinder mower, or an aerator, or a a lot of high pressure cleaners um, for those people. What's the GX? GX one sixty V GXV yeah no GX GX GX, GX is horizontal GXV is vertical so you've had these I can't put something back on the screen because it would take too long yep but um you've got these replacement mo motors or uh, engines I keep forgetting yeah so but, it's called but, the E Gen three sixty so we will have these on market in twenty twenty four um basically it's a bolt on replacement for your horizontal shaft five and a half horsepower petrol engine. So uh, cylinder mowers is a big keen market. Yes. Been and hit up on. Right. What size is this uh, comparatively? So you would have a 120, a 160, it's a, 160. a 270. It's a 160. Okay. So it is a 160. It's a, yeah. Um, it's a big engine. It's a big it's, engine. It's not 
Uh, because I believe the little uh, one, 120 is like four horsepower. Yeah, three and a half, four, Make... four, and the uh, 160s are five and a half, and the 200s are six and a half. Yeah, because a lot of us are, are using the, the, the 160. One. I think yeah, that's the most yeah. common. Yeah, one. it is. Yeah, the 160 is the most run of the mill on a pump, on a pr- on a pressure washer. Yes, pumps. Um, yep, those, that, those kinds stuff. of things. Yep. First thing I'm thinking of is the Scott Bonner restoration market. Right, people who um, I I think look that's a that's a fantastic use case scenario. People love updating them and all that kind of stuff. What's the cost on one of these? This one we're just finalising now, so we've done a lot of testing with this unit. Um, there's pro five people that are listening to the podcast right now. They're like, you told me you tell me when you're ready. Um, so you're hearing it now, um, but. <laughs> We will have it. It's going into mass production in December. So we will see it next year at some stage. Uh, Price-wise, for someone doing a, a Scotty Resto, I definitely, obviously, you're going to pay a lot more than a than a petrol engine, but um, it's not going to be out of this world, that's for sure. Um, we'll definitely update our website when, when we've got our definite pricing on that unit. Um, but it's all variable speed with a, with a dial. Um, so mm-hmm. very good for a cylinder mower application as well. So you can obviously dial the RPM down and then ramp it up as required, like a normal engine. Yeah, because that's actually super important with certain, uh, yeah, centrifugal clutch ones. Yeah. Well, yeah, and like uh, your blade speed is actually not uh, faster is not better. Yeah, yeah. That's when you're right. cutting like scissors, yeah, right, and so. I, I pretty much have some of my mowers like just slightly above idle because it's the sharp blades that are cutting. And um, yeah, you know, it's a uh, just different mode, that kind of thing. The other thing I was really interested in for the lawn care stuff, which is why we talked about the low scale peak, is because uh, I would feel my, my, my gut feel is that a commercial operator is not going to use a Greenworks mower as a scalping mower because it's kind of a disrespectful act for a mower that's kind of supposed to be your regular maintenance stuff. Yep. You usually use your old one to do that, but homeowners might, right? And homeowner, like a great setup for a homeowner would be a, uh, you know, if you wanted to cylinder mow, uh, you know, which is you know, really getting into it, well, you could, you know, put your Greenworks um, motor. That's right. I always get motor and yep. engine mixed up. It doesn't really matter. But you can put your motor on. But something that cuts short in the scalping and – You've got a little scarifier. It's look, it's a what is forty volt? A forty volt, yeah. Is that right? So we did touch. So it's on definitely the- not considered. It's definitely not considered commercial. No, no, it's but it's for the hobby it. hobbyist yeah. lawnies, that's it's an interesting thing. Definitely, um, it's one of our more popular products in that forty volt range. So, our forty and sixty volts obviously aimed at the homeowner. Um, sixty volt prosumer. So we do definitely have uh, commercial operators using that particular range as well but in the 40 volt yeah the scarifier de thatcher uh is probably uh besides the push mower uh that's probably our second most popular tool in that range it does a very very good job in comparison to its competitor um and price point it's it's up there as well so um you just have to jump on um social media and you see quite a few guys have used it and see what it does um uh yeah we're definitely getting a that one there is very good for the lawnies uh, yeah, I do think it's like, yeah, although I do love using commercial stuff and I have done a side-by-side comparison with with a Ryobi scarifier, which came out many years ago, and a MoMaster scarifier, <laughs> which the, the MoMaster is like probably more than, you know, I think the MoMaster is 20 times the cost yep. without batteries. <laughs> I think the MoMaster was six thousand at the time, and the and the Ryobi was three hundred bucks at yep. the time. Yep. So I mean, you should see a difference, and you know, it's they're, obviously they're a different class, but not everybody is going to buy one, and the home enthusiast could be there. Would it be something? Now, I probably would. You know, I've got a a pre baked opinion that this is probably not for somebody who might want to do a couple of side renos in their business. You know and trash it a bit, can it handle it? Is it worth it? Or should they just get a dedicated commercial machine? Um, I think it would handle a couple, but if you were planning on going through a whole season 
of Renault's and had quite a bit of work as a as a commercial operator. You'd be better off investing, um, even in some of the cheaper petrol ones. Um, yeah. Touching on the equip stuff, there's definitely something in the pipeline for something a bit more heavier duty than that 40 volt unit. Um, nice. So there will be something that will probably handle a bit more of the the harder work. But there's definitely a few guys out there that are doing a couple of Renaults a year using that 40 volt unit. Um, yeah, I'm surprised what that thing actually does. What I would say for for all those types of units, well, for people who are just interested in that kind of work, is they for what I've used and what I've seen, they are fantastic at, at the light groom. Yeah. And, and you know, you don't really need much energy just to tickle the surface, especially buffalo haggis, those sort of ugly runners that can sometimes grow across when you grow up too short and just, you know, those sorts of machines to pull it up. So I was interested in that from a lawn care perspective and just kind of feeling, you know, about the, the range there. Um, another thing, a couple of other things that, that's just coming to mind is you also, I mean, I thought that I'd want to talk too much about this, but I was surprised. I didn't know you have like drills and whippers, uh, not whippers, of course you have that, drills, yeah. and, uh, angle grinders and that sort of stuff. So obviously not an 82 volt massive hunk of battery plugged into a, you no, know, no, 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 that'd be, that'd be, be epic. Um, <laughs> no, so when, <laughs> that's, that'd be suicidal. <laughs> when we launched the range in Australia, we launched with 24 and 40 volt, um, which were yeah. the two platforms we started with, but very rapidly we introduced the 60 volt Greenworks Pro range, which is actually our flagship um, our range and it grows extensively. But yeah, within that 24 volt range, there's uh drills and angle grinders and impact guns and all that sort of stuff so there's quite a few tools in that range and um obviously that market is pretty well dominated by milwaukee and makita and all that but we definitely cater to that uh company that sort of segment as well um yeah we're we're a battery uh ope company first and then they sort of did a bit of the tools thing along the side and it sort of Stayed in the range. Um, even in America, they do a 24-volt vacuum cleaner, like a stick vacuum. Apparently, it's better than a Dyson. So according to all the reviews I've seen on Amazon and whatnot, so we may add a vacuum at some stage. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's a whole changing field. i got one more question to ask you. Um, I didn't actually prepare you. I've prepared some of the other guests with this, but I decided I shouldn't have done that. I should have just asked them on the fly because yep. it's more interesting. Let's say hypothetically there is a fire that's going to be caused at every single Greenworks factory across the world. And you have the magical ability to stop one. Batteries are safe. Okay. Batteries and charges are safe. Yep, good. You have the magical ability to, to save one product, oh. right? And keep it in the market. Uh, which one are you saving? <sighs> Up until recently, um, uh, I, uh, the stander, the 32 stander. I like it. Okay. I rate that one. Um, but that hog saw's really got me. I can't wait to get my hands on one. So. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the, the stander or one of the Optimus Z's just because of the um, the game changing and the performance that definitely have come brought to market something that's on par um, and fit for... Uh, all our ranges, but these things are just, yeah, full of that many features and performance. So, yeah, it'd be, those would be one of the ones I would save, yeah. Yep. And or the mini bike. I mean, it's hard. I'd be going out the flames on that mini bike. Just When you were talking before, I was thinking about something silly and I think an opportunity to say it, but one of the things, I was, it was sort of silly, but I realized the 32-inch stander, you got somebody who's less than 110 kilos, who's a gun on a whippersnipper, right? <laughs> You I can wasn't... drive around and mow and whippersnip the edges I at the was... same time. I wasn't going to bring it up, but now you have. <laughs> uh, I think up to about 14 people have mentioned that uh, over the time of demoing it. And I think about 10 of those were at the Contractors Day in Brisbane. <laughs> They're like, oh, we could just put someone on there and do two jobs at once. And I'm like, I can't say you can or can't do that. I just don't want to know. <laughs> Mate, that's the thing about, that's the thing about contractors that you've got to think about is, is 
everyone's trying to get efficient. Everyone's oh, trying. Efficiency like, is key. So um, you can. Someone's got to reduce the wheels on a mower that doesn't cut. You know what I mean? Like somebody's going to do something like that. Somebody is going to put an esky where an esky shouldn't go. Someone's going to try and fix this because you know it's like as to create a juices and I, I don't mean this in a in a derogatory sense looks like it's stupid like people are mowing all day and they just think of like oh, how can how i can most I make... efficiently do this yeah 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 you know yeah no um so, i'm glad you brought that up it was like oh, i'm not gonna say it but um yeah that's like i'm thinking about 14 or 15 of the count of like i'm just gonna sip me off cider on there trim while i mow and then get, can get the blower and go back and i was just like i can see it but please don't or just strap them on <laughs> <laughs> i used to work at a school and uh this is the other thing i could see happening you know how many feet per second you were saying it was cutting someone falls off the front okay look please don't do yeah, that no, no, no. but i have this funny story where um i had a tractor style ride on lawnmower at the school i used to work at and it was school holidays and it was this young mate, a uh, young boy who used to, oh, it was 15, 16, and he would work for us in the school holidays. Great little kid and, uh, you know, just getting stuff done. And anyways, one day we want to get back right across the school. There's only one, you know, tractor style mower. And uh, other than him sitting on my lap, uh, the only way he could kind of get, you know, get to the front was to put his feet on the front axle oh, and yeah. hold the engine right <laughs> and not with the uh, uh what do you call it the bonnet thing yeah, yeah, on top yeah, of the engine yeah. and if you know these tractor style things the the bonnet lifts forward it does, right yes. <laughs> so oh, I laugh the first time held i brake <laughs> the first time i brake the whole thing just lifts up and he just goes all the way back and i was braking pretty hard because we were in a rush to finish <laughs> And it was one of the funniest things. Yeah. <laughs> so there was no blades running and I did not run over him and he didn't even hurt himself that much. It was just, you know, kind of, you know, hurt his pride. Yeah. Uh, and funny yeah. for everyone involved. <laughs> I was just me and him. No one else, even at yeah. the school, the school holidays, but it was just, it was just funny. And anyway, but that's also going through my mind where I'm like, I je- if someone worked for me, I genuinely would not be okay with someone sitting on the front no. of the mower having that experience because also having had several workers' compensation claims over my years, I do not want anybody going under a oh, mower. Oh, no. Like, even just I, the, I can see that happening. Yeah, even just a work, any workers' comp claim, you never want that, but let alone something like a mower injury. Oh, yeah, and like, I mean, I'm talking without the blades even. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know, like, oh, man, like, that's a bad day. So please... Don't do it. That was a. It was a. Don't joke. do it. Right. It was a joke. Right. Putting a sprayer on there and strapping it down. That's a. That's a good idea. Do that. You know. KFC. You could have a whole box. You could. In the front. You could, oh, we didn't think it could make a whole you grate a just for it. We could. We could run the heating off the USB to keep it heated. Ugh. The esky that you get out's got some Pepsi Max in it. Man, this is what makes life have meaning and significance <laughs> of value again. Anyways, this has been long. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming no, on, that's though. Great. Thanks. Uh, where do people reach out to you if they want to buy, if they want to set up everything? For so like seven, eight go go check out our website, greenworksaustralia.com. Um, we've got commercial dealers all around the country. So probably one thing I didn't mention, and I will, is that um, your local Greenworks dealer may not be a Greenworks commercial dealer because it is a separate range. So the dealer locator is in the commercial tab on our website. Um, or mm-hmm. send us a email at support at greenworksaustralia.com and um, one of the team will get back to you, probably me or one of the many others that are there. I've also seen that you guys do like doing some demos here and there and I think yeah. that's really important. So can people get their hands? Uh, you, you've got events and things like that or you do definitely we, up? We definitely um, uh, through our dealers or if you're um, local to one of our um, – our reps or our warehouses around the country, we can facilitate a demo through that. Um, and we do support dealers uh, when they do demo days. I'm in Brisbane this coming weekend, so doing one up there. Um, but yeah, otherwise trade shows or just reach out. Uh, same thing on socials, send a message there and one of us will see that and, and help you out there as well. All right. Thanks, mate, for coming on. No worries. Hey, Thanks, guys. We'll see you Hopefully, uh, we'll see you informative.